Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the special board meeting of the Azusa Unified School District on December 21st, 2021. I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. And we will begin with our flag salute. I do believe that we have Savannah Kendrick here with us from Paramount. Hey, Savannah. Hi. You ready to lead us? Mm -hmm. All right, take it away. Okay, please put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivincible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Savannah. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. Okay, then we'll go ahead and move on to our roll call for this evening. Uh, board member Ariana. Present. I am here today. Board member Cruz Gonzalez. Here. Board member Bo. Here. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Present. And I, board member Greer, am here as well. Uh, next, we'll move on to 2.0, which is the approval of uh, the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve 2.1. Second. Moved by board member Arianas and second by board member Rodriguez Pena. We'll go ahead and any discussion? Then we'll move to a vote. I have to use the new computer because my computer is back. I don't have the link. Okay, we can do a we can do a hand vote. So if you just message it to me. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes. Board member Bo. Yes. Board member Arianas. Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez. Yes. And I, and I am also yes. So the motion passes five yes, um, five to zero. Moving on then to item 3.1, um, public comment on agenda or non-agenda items. This is an opportunity for the public to address the Board of Education. To address the Board of Education on any agenda or non-agenda items. When the public wishes to address the board on any agenda item, they may fill out a blue card, stand at the podium, or raise their hand while in Zoom attendance. The board will take blue card requests first, followed in order by speakers at the podium, and then those in Zoom attendance. Just a few other reminders um, for, for tonight in particular. Um, I, I know that there is a, a, a special item that, that we have on our agenda. I do want to remind everyone that you have three minutes. Um, and this will be an evening where I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to those three minutes. And so I'm going to ask that you please be mindful of the clock um, and that you're, you're able to, to wrap up your comments within that time. Um, otherwise, I apologize in advance, but I, but I will stop you at um, right at three minutes. Um, also, a reminder that um, we, we don't, you, you will not have the option of yielding your time to someone else. And so you can use, utilize that three minutes. Those three minutes are for any individual speaker. But if, if you are wanting to yield those three minutes for someone else to compound um, additional minutes, uh, that, is another, that, that would go beyond the allotted three minutes per person, and, and I, I wouldn't uh, allow that. Uh, the last thing I'll say is um, just to be mindful of time, it would be helpful if you were, were mindful of other comments that were made tonight, maybe prioritizing the, the things that others have not yet said to ensure that there's a diversity of perspective that, that comes to, to, the, uh, to, to the board as we're looking to make uh, some, some decisions tonight. Uh, that would be most helpful uh, just to ensure that um, all, all of those uh, pieces are, are covered and, and um, the, the, the insight is provided and opinions are shared to the board. With that said, we will go ahead and move on to, to our public comment. Do we have any blue cards? Okay, first up, we have Philip Villa. Good evening, School Board President, Mr. Greer, and all board members, Superintendent Ms. Ortega, and Cabinet, and anyone else attending this meeting. I have come to speak to you all tonight about the school reorganization rebranding. Uh, rebranding for our district, in my eyes, is the best thing because of all the new opportunities for the school. Yes, I know this rebranding is a costly thing, but this will be a life changer. 
I, re I recently sat in a meeting regarding school reorganization, and there were people in that meeting who were very against the idea of rebranding the high school. I have had many family members and friends who have graduated from Gladstone, and ever since I was a little kid, I have always wanted to graduate from the G. Rebranding for the high school is the best thing because no one has to be discouraged when they had to be when they have been going to one school for so many years, and then all of a sudden have to turn around and graduate in the opposite school that I did not choose to go to. A new name would be neutral to the two high school names right now, so that way no one has a bad taste in their mouth. By the time my current freshman class merges to one high school, <laughs> the invested amount of time that we have spent as gladiators will feel like as if it was all for nothing. We are as important as the classes before us and the classes after us, and we deserve to feel like we matter. I ask that you strongly consider this rebounding request as we move forward to the changes that will be coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Philip. Next, we have Cecilia Ford. Good evening, Mr. President Greer, members of the board, Superintendent Ortega, and audience. My name is Cecilia Ford. I am the proud parent of a very well-rounded, involved, amazing gladiator who will graduate class of 2025. Tonight is a night that will change our district from what used to be to what will be in the future. Traditions are a huge part of our district. How do I know this? I am a proud Gladstone Gladiator alumni, class of 1997, and I have been a district employee since 2009. Traditions include things such as Azusa Gladstone rivalries, two graduations each year to recognize our Aztecs as well as our gladiators among various events throughout the year. Well, traditions are about to change. Change for different, change for the betterment of our district. Change is always hard for everyone and moving forward will be challenging for all. But as a whole, I believe the changes will improve our district for the future. It's time to start new traditions with one high school. It's time to move on to new beginnings. It's time to look forward beyond the horizon. With that being said, one high school that our district will have should be rebranded. Give the school a new name, which means a new identity. Is it gonna cost money? Of course it is. When I hear the board say we don't have money, we are saying that, our, that the students are not worth it. Our kids are the future and every single one of them deserves to be proud of their accomplishments. They work very hard every single day from the youngest TK student to the senior that is getting ready for their adult life. Our students at Gladstone High School deserve the consideration to have a new identity. The choice to be moved from one campus to the other is not a voluntary choice, but a forced choice. In order for our students to maintain a high positive quality of self-worth, Rebranding Azusa High School is a small request for gladiators that have chosen to be gladiators. Attending a high school of choice in ninth grade within the district is a choice a student makes and feels comfortable doing so. Being forced to pick up and go somewhere else could cause a disastrous disruption to some individuals. Let's make our gladiators feel welcome at a new campus as we all merge together with a new identity. Remember, old traditions are a thing of the past and new traditions will be the future. No longer Aztecs, no longer a gladiator. Thank you for allowing to be to speak tonight to express my thoughts and personal feelings. Have a great evening. Thank you, Cecilia. Next, we have Francisco Duran. Good evening, my name is Francisco. I've uh, lived in Azusa most of my entire life. 30 years now. My entire family went to Azusa High School class of 96, 99, and then myself 2009. Um, and when I had heard about the rebranding, I was completely surprised. I thought we were uh, closing schools to save money and now to embark on a plan to spend so much on things that won't have a direct impact on students and a big benefit, especially considering that in eight years, none of these students will even remember Gladstone as an option. Um, I personally went to center middle school before this, and I don't know if you all are aware, but that's a mixed, you know, 
center of the district type of school, half of my friends went to Gladstone. While the football coaches were trying to rile up the student body in the Azusa versus Gladstone rivalry, that weekend I went and had dinner with my friends on Arrow Highway and Enid, <laughs> who went to Gladstone every day. I had absolutely no concept of this rivalry. My best friends were there. Uh, some of those friends were at my wedding this past April. And the same thing for a lot of my other family members. I just don't think that this is an issue at all. And within eight years, a lot of these students who are filtering through the elementary schools and middle schools, they're just not going to remember this as an option. My alma mater of Gladstone Street Elementary closed. And it made me very sad because one of my favorite teachers, Mrs. Reese, had taught there before she retired. And I remembered this. But that is my memory, my own personal memory. And it cost nobody anything for that to disappear if it's going to have a greater impact on future students with the money saved. Uh, so I'd just like you to consider this, that Azusa High School could use the money to improve the quality of life of future students. I mean, we still have a hole in the ground that is supposedly a pool and uh, that kind of thing. So I'd really like you to just consider that the benefit of that money for future student bodies in a community that is Azusa. Um, I am very proud whenever I hear the word Azusa. I am from Azusa, and I don't care uh, who might be ashamed of it, of hearing the name of a town that was formerly blue collar or is still very strongly blue collar. I have no shame. I love hearing and marching back competition that Azusa High School from Azusa, California is doing well, just like this championship that they won this past season. And I would like to continue seeing that. I'd like to continue hearing the students from Azusa High School achieve Ivy League school acceptance that the academic program has done well because then I get to hear Azusa High in the newspapers and it it warms my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. Next we have Diana Reyes Williams. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, well, I was rushing in because I knew the meeting was starting. So um, if I sound like I'm rambling, I know I only have three minutes, so here I go. Hello, President Greer, school board members, administrators, faculty, and the community of Azusa. My name is Diana Reyes Williams and I'm a homeowner. I'm a taxpayer and I care about our community and our school district. Uh, several months ago, I spoke before the school board in regards to an idea that popped into my head um, being um, living across the street from Foothill Middle School and knowing that there was a possibility that the campus would be closed. Um, I really don't want to see the campus closed, but I know that we have to make some hard, hard decisions this evening. So one of my ideas was to uh, suggest that we combine the campus of Foothill Middle School with Azusa High. Now I'm hearing um, discussions about rebranding and what I would suggest is if we, we take a look at what the calendar looks like, what the plan looks like to see how long it's gonna take to actually transition to one school, why would we need to brand at all if we allow the students that are Gladstone to finish their education at Gladstone High School? So um, I'm not sure if this is making any sense, but if we start with elementary and then we work with um, the middle school, by the time we get to that point, the kids that are in school right now would be graduating. So I'm, I'm just trying to think outside the box in a way to where we're sensitive to the students because of everything that they've experienced. And, um, you know, we need to meet both ways. But I also want to acknowledge that we spent a lot of money on our foot on the football fields, Azusa and Gladstone and to rebrand, as I've heard, would be costly. So I really want um, and I hope that the board will take all this into consideration that maybe it's not necessary to rebrand. Maybe we can keep the high schools the way they are. And as we progress, then we discuss at that point what's going to happen. So those are my thoughts for this evening. I know you have a tough decision. Uh, we trust in your decision and the manner in which you will be making it. And I want to say thank you very much for this opportunity to speak before you. Good evening. Thank you, Diana. Next, we have Alicia Rodriguez. Do 
Do we have Alicia with us? Rodriguez, if you are currently talking, you are on mute still. Okay, maybe we can move to Cecilia de la Torre. And if uh, Alicia is still there, we can bring her back on for the end. Hello, this is Cecilia. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Okay. Good evening, Superintendent Ortega, cabinet members and board members and community members. My name is Cecilia de la Torre, and tonight I'm speaking to you as a certificated employee for over 21 years, a parent of two current students and athletes, a community volunteer for both football and baseball boosters, and an alumni of AUSD, proud class of 1995, Azusa High. And most proud of having four generations of AUSD schools, I would like to express and share that I strongly recommend that you do not spend any monies on rebranding our future mega high school and mega middle school. It is time, yes, it is time that we spend the monies that we would spend on rebranding and spend it on our students, our educational programs for our students and our facilities, programs that include baccalaureate, AP courses, STEM, AVID, engineering, PLTW, early college program, GATE, dual immersion, English learners, business programs, and integration of trade programs. Our students of Azusa deserve the best, the best curriculum, the best programs. Our teachers deserve top-notch training, intense detailed training from beginning to end. No cutting corners, no excuses, no explanations that we have to settle for 75% of a program because we run out of money. No excuses that we do not have enough classrooms so we cannot have science labs on site. No more excuses. Our students deserve the money to be spent on our programs and not rebranding. Let us carry on our proud Aztec and proud gladiator traditions. Teach our future students about our past and bring to our future in a positive, productive manner. Our students deserve the best programs, the best sports facilities, a top-notch education taught by our fabulous AUSD staff members, including our administration, certificated and classified employees. So I'm asking the board members tonight to vote no on rebranding and yes to putting our students first. Put that money for our students to our programs. It's time AUSD stands at the top. We are the A on the top of that mountain to the north of us. And yes, we are A to Z in the USA. Together we can and we will achieve more. Again, thank you respectfully for your time and your dedication. Have a wonderful evening, happy holidays, and thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Next we have Marjorie Avison. Or President, did you want to uh, circle back to see if Alicia Rodriguez was there? Uh, is, do we have Alicia back with us? Yes, she is online. Alicia? Hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Perfect. Um, good evening, board members, President Greer. My husband and I also, uh, we're uh, parents of two students at Lee Elementary School, and we are very concerned with the school reorganization that's happening. And kind of to chime in with what uh, Miss uh, Cecilia was mentioning, I don't understand why there's so much money going to rebranding the high school, and we don't see any of these funds that are going towards the elementary schools and the middle schools. Like she said, like Cecilia said, Teachers need to get paid better. There needs to be more staff at the schools. There's got to be better programs, science programs. You guys, it seems like it's all the focus is going towards football and cheerleading. And we understand the sports are uh, an important key role in high school. But I, at no point have I heard anybody mention of how you guys are going to help the elementary school students and the middle school students. And on top of it, 
some of the models that you have, you're leaving one or two schools open above the 210. How are parents going to get to all these other schools? Is the board going to touch on the subject of how you guys are going to allow for students to commute or help the parents that walk their kids to school every morning or kids that walk to school any morning? I, I haven't heard any of this be mentioned and I'm sorry, my voice is cracking. I don't know if I'm starting to get laryngitis. So my husband's going to help me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the education should start in the beginning with elementary. It should be focused more there and in middle school can, so that they start off with that uh, education and that, that, that they need so that when they go forward into middle school and onto high school, they already have that fundamental uh, education uh, wise of being able to learn and want to learn more so that they continue all the way to college. We have the colleges here in Azusa and yet we, our education uh, uh, in the elementaries and junior high and high school, they're very low rated. They should be rated at the highest due to the fact that we have colleges here in Azusa. So therefore we should focus more on starting the kids off in elementary with the best education that they can get better programs, better equipment. A lot of these schools don't even have staff equipment, soccer balls, you know, basketballs, anything so that they get more fundamentals in everything and physical education and reading, you know, math, everything. Science, music. We're just very concerned with everything that's going on. And I know our time is coming to an end, but we just wanted to address some of these issues. And some of these issues are also issues that a lot of the parents at Lee Elementary are worried about. The, we don't know what's going to happen to our kids and what mental help are you going to offer them as they're going to be transitioning to new campuses? Are their teachers going to be with them, staff? Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Alicia. Next, we have Marjorie Avison. Good evening, President Greer, members of the board, Superintendent Ortega and Cabinet. My name is Margie Avison, and I'm the Vice President of the Azusa Educators Association and a member of the bargaining team. Tonight, I would like to speak to the issue of COLA or the cost of living adjustment. The state awards a COLA generally on an annual basis to our base local control funding formula or LCFF to help districts and employees to deal with rising costs due to inflation. Last school year, there was not a COLA included in the California state budget. Inflation is running rampant and the teachers in Azusa Unified are already being behind the curve because of increased costs for the last two years. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics Consumer Price Index, inflation in Los Angeles County for the past year was up 6% from December of 2020. On June 28th of this year, Governor Newsom signed the state budget, which included a provision for a 5.07% COLA or cost of living adjustment to the LCFF local control funding formula. The COLA is intended to cover the increased costs, which includes salaries. As the board is looking to give direction to the bar district bargaining team on how to settle total compensation, Please remember employees need the COLA to pay their increased costs. Having a strong and fair district proposal on compensation for the 21-22 school year is not only necessary for, it's not only necessary for our current employees, but also for AUSD to attract new teachers, but to ret retain our existing loyal teachers. A full COLA will demonstrate to our unit members that they are valued by AUSD. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Margie. Um, board members, before we proceed with the, the next names that we have on the list, I, I just want to draw our attention to uh, board bylaw 9323, which would say that our public comment is to be uh, limited to 20 minutes unless board gives consent to extend the, that allotted time. So we definitely have some additional names there that, that would like to speak. Um, so so I, I'd, I'd like to, to to see if I can get some general consensus from the board to extend our time. I, I think this is a special meeting for a special reason. And therefore, I would also agree that we allow our community to speak to the board at this time. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. I also agree. Okay, thank you. And we'll move on to uh, Leslie Jones. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, hear you loud and clear. 
Um, so thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. My name is Leslie Jones, a longtime Azusa Unified parent. Um, I wanted to express a concern about the rebranding for the high school. Um, I've heard that some board members are against rebranding the new high school, but I just wanted to express some of my concerns in no particular order of why I feel that the, high, the new high school should be rebranded. The schools on the west side of the district feel left out at times. Um, I've talked to many students, many parents, various sports teams at the schools that feel like we're the redheaded stepchild of the district. Gladstone students and parents feel that Azusa High always gets the first of everything, new instruments, new uniforms, et cetera. If the new high school is kept as Azusa High School, um, it's just a confirmation that Azusa High School is the favorite high school of the district. Whether this is true or not, it sends a strong message. If we try to create a new high school, it's going to help unite the students and the families. Why not start fresh? A new name, new color, new mascot. We need to help unite the families that are creating this new high school. I know money is a huge concern. However, Azusa Unified has not been very wise with its money in the past. Um, I've been involved with the district for many years and I've seen some very poor spending. If spending money is gonna help unite the new high school, why not spend the money? Um, the, I've heard that it's gonna cost less than we originally thought. We want our district to get a fresh new start for everybody involved. Please do what's right for the entire district. What message do you wanna to send to the community? Please rebrand the new high school. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Next, we have Emily Ruiz. Um, good evening, President Greer, Board, Superintendent Ortega, and Cabinet. My name is Emily Ruiz. I'm currently a student at Azusa High School. I'm calling in regards to the rebranding of Azusa High School. I can see why you think this decision is the best for a group of students. Unfortunately, it is not the best decision for our community. I live in Azusa. My parents had purchased our home in Azusa two years before I was even born. I take great pride in representing my school and city everywhere I go. As a highly involved community member, the name of my city is very dear to my heart. I love Azusa and the beautiful community that lives in this city. I don't just say that, I show it every weekend when I get up early to volunteer at different events with peers. Saying, hi, I'm from Canyon City High School, will leave out our beautiful city's name. I want people in different communities to know that youth from Azusa care. They won't know that if I say Canyon City High School. I don't know where this rivalry and fear you speak about comes from. Students from Azusa and Gladstone work closely every week. We clean our cities together. We play in orchestra and mariachi together. A lot of us are friends. We went to the same elementary school and middle school together. We enjoy working together. If we are talking about being fair, then you would have to change the name of every school in Azusa during this process. If you change the name of Gladstone and Azusa both, then I would understand. My little sister will get to go to Gladstone Middle School, which won't even be in Azusa, but not to Azusa High School in her city. The money that will be wasted on this is money we can use to buy things we need. For example, sport uniforms. It's embarrassing to go watch a game that is not football and see our teams with mismatch in old uniforms to fix our instruments and not have teachers have to pick out what instruments get fixed this year. Fix the restrooms that we actually use at school, not the ones that are in the gym and that are always locked up. A lot of our extracurricular activities need a lot of financial support. I feel bad saying this, but it's the truth. I hope you take my opinion into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. Next, we have Griselda Berry. Good evening, President Greer, members of the board, Superintendent Ortega, and everyone present. I'd first like to thank the board, district administrators, and all members of the committees that have put in countless hours to discuss the multitude of reconfiguration options. Tonight's agenda includes three attachments, each of which shows Foothill is closing. I currently work at Foothill and would like to share some of the concerns our staff has discussed. Foothill students would be transferred twice before attending high school. How might multiple transfers influence a parent's desire to remain in the district? Additionally, 
Neither Center nor Slauson has been modernized. Why move students and staff to a substandard facility for a year only to move them again? If Foothill is not closed, we understand that it might be used as an extension of Azusa. We ask that you consider using Foothill for zero period students or after school activities. This will enable Foothill Middle School students to enjoy their last year without commingling with high school students. If we mix students, we run the risk of losing more middle school students before the final transition. Many parents have already voiced their disapproval of mixing seven through 12. Although the points I've raised were specific to Foothill, there were other concerns pertaining to the super middle school. Has the district fully explored how they will support bus transportation? Rancho Cucamonga has had to cancel busing services because they couldn't find sufficient drivers. What will be the backup plan for students who are tardy? We also ask the board members and district leaders to examine local super middle schools. Our district can use some amazing schools as models, specifically Ramona Middle School in Bonita Unified, which serves over 1300 students. Please prioritize the number of administrators, counselors and teachers that will be needed to meet the needs of our middle schoolers. They deserve nothing less than a well thought out plan. We trust you will not rush as you deliberate these points. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Griselda. Next we have Michelle. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Michelle Valencia. I'm a parent from Alice Allington. Michelle, we do have a bit of an echo coming from you. Uh, is, it is it better? No. Okay, how about now? I'm sorry. That sounds good. Thank you. I am a parent from Alice Allington, currently on the PTO board, PTO as a parent. Um, I'm coming to this meeting today. I have a child that goes to Alice Allington, and I noticed that that elementary was on the chopping board. Um, I'm coming to you guys today to say, did you guys take in consideration that we put, you guys put all this money into that school to make it a, a K through eighth grade. And then we're talking about closing it. And then I hear all the other schools um, talking about money, but it's just going to waste because we put all this money into that school. That's one. Number two is we have such amazing teachers. What's going to happen with them? Our staff, what's going to happen with them? Are they guaranteed a spot at these other schools? Our wonderful principal that you guys just gave to us, and then now the parents have to think our students got used to this person, and now they're going to have to go to a different school. And then I think about it, too, all the parents that we're going to lose to different school districts. Yes, I understand some people on the board are like, no, nobody's going to change out of the school district. No, they're not. Yes, we've spoke to plenty of parents that voice their opinion at our elementary school, and they've all stated we will take our student out of Azusa Unified and move to Covina District. That's a big problem because not only will the district lose out, but our students will on a good school. Yes, I understand everybody's worried about the rebranding of Gladstone High School and Azusa High School, but what about our elementary schools? Just like other parents have stated on here, what about those? Those are the kids who have to go to middle school and high school. Yes, these high school kids are gonna graduate, but we haven't looked at the big picture of our elementary students. We're only, I feel like we're only worried about high school and middle school. So let's focus on keeping Allington open and using that as a model to show different elementary schools, hey, we can make it a K through eighth and keep those and not have seventh through 12th grade at high schools. I wouldn't want my child to specifically to go to a high school in seventh grade. 
Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Next, we have A. Sanchez. Do we have A. Sanchez in attendance? Sanchez, you may Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there. Good evening, President Greer, Superintendent Ortega, fellow board members and cabinet. My name is Albert Sanchez. I've been teaching for Azusa Unified since 1998, and I'm currently a physical education teacher and the athletic director at Glasson High School. I'm speaking tonight about the rebranding of the one high school and realize like many other proud Azusa citizens that this is a hot topic on so many levels. As a Gladstone alumni, I'm speaking up on behalf of my fellow Gladiator alums, current Gladiator students and staff um, who want to see rebranding take place when we open up the one high school. I want to bring the attention or bring to your attention that many of you may not be aware of it's something that I've thought of since this rebranding has come to uh, light. Two local school districts merged their high schools in the mid to late 80s and rebranded. You had Royal Oak Royals and Charter Oak Lancers. Um, they merged their two high schools in 1986 um, and became known as the Charter Oak Chargers. In 1988, the Edgewood Trojans and West Covina Bruins merged their two high schools and became known as the West Covina Bulldogs. In both instances, the newly formed high schools changed their colors and mascots. Charter Oak, blue and yellow, who are the Chargers, and West Covina to the burgundy and gold, and they are the Bulldogs. Had Gladstone High School been chosen to be the one high school, and this is very important, we know that rebranding wouldn't even be an issue. Gladstone would be rebranded without question, yet this may not be reciprocated. This doesn't sit well with the Gladstone community. I totally understand that both schools are very passionate about their school's history. You know the sayings, gladiator forever, forever gladiator, or once an Aztec, always an Aztec. Well, we need a new slogan to represent both high schools as one. I leave you with this. I propose that we keep Azusa High School because it represents our city and who we are. I recommend, recommend the district turns this rebranding idea into a contest where the students, the staff and the community pick a new mascot. Thank you for your time. And we gladiators are counting on you to make the right decision and rebrand. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Next, we have uh, Julie Senna Steven. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello, my name is Julie Santi Stavan. Thank you for the introduction. Adrian, um, I am a longtime certified teach, certificated teacher at Gladstone High School. I'm asking this, please do not vote on this issue tonight. Rather, do a third party demographic dem demographer to analyze the potential enrollment loss that you will lose Gladstone students to the nearby Covina Unified School District. You will lose revenue. You have plenty of revenue right now because of the one-time money you get from the state and from the, from the federal government. Once that's gone, you will lose revenue if you lose students. Please do not vote on this issue tonight. Rather, find a quantitative analysis, third-party analysis to evaluate the potential enrollment loss you will get, have from this transition. Thank you for your time. And that's my, all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. S. Next, we have Nolan Sinclair. Um, 
good evening, board, President Greer, Superintendent Ortega, and Cabinet. Um, I just wanted to finish what I was talking about last time. I just want to kind of give a different perspective from the outside. I've worked in Azusa for 17 years. I understand the dynamics between Gladstone and Azusa and the pride between both schools. But um, I've lived in San Dimas my whole life, went to San Dimas High School, played sports, family members have played sports, band, other things. And to be honest, outside of the city of Azusa, nobody really knows that there is a Gladstone. Azusa is the brand of Azusa. Azusa High School is the brand of Azusa. So when we talk about bringing people to Azusa, the board's been talking about adding programs to bring people from outside the city to go to schools there. My fear is that if you rebrand, nobody's going to know what it is. If you rebrand at Canyon City, by the time people figure out where Canyon City is, they've already moved on. So you already have a brand there in Azusa. In a marketing standpoint, when you add things and build things up, people will see what's going on in the city of Azusa. Growing up, Northview was known as only the wrestling school. Nobody really cared about Northview. All of a sudden, they poured money in, built great facilities, and now we're losing kids to Northview, and a lot of people go to Northview. So if we pour money into the high school, you're going to retain the people in Azusa, bring the city together. And I, I like what Albert said. I didn't think of it that way. You could rebrand the mascot. It's still Azusa High School, but rebrand the mascot and bring the city together. I also believe that there's a way for the board or the, the district and the high school to recognize and maybe reward the students who are gonna sacrifice to bring the city together and make something special for them that everybody will remember that they're the ones that, that did the sacrifice to bring the city together. I wanted to thank you guys for this process. It's been transparent. I appreciate the cabinet for all the extra work you've done when the board asked for extra information. I appreciate the detailed discussion that the board's had. And I think um, it's been, eye-opening with all the, you know, people having issues with everybody in this world and not being able to get along, that people can have different ideas and speak about it and work together to come to a conclusion and solution. So I appreciate the transparency. And as a teacher, um, I look forward to seeing where this district's going with the leadership we have now. Thank you. Thank you, Nolan. Next, we have Melissa Wilson-Perkins. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, I know it's gonna be a long night. I'm, <laughs> thank you guys so much for um, safeguarding AUSD for current and future generations by tackling this hard issue of re reorganization. Um, I wasn't really gonna talk about rebranding, but listening to everyone else's comments, I just wanted to chime in to say that um, as a previous caller mentioned, there is a way to, there's, you know, sort of paths in between, sort of maybe um, extending the campus consolidation time. The original um, recommendation was maybe five years and then we changed to two, something like three years would allow more uh, gladiators to graduate from their home campus. Or perhaps as the early, earlier, the last caller mentioned um, a partial rebranding, maybe with the mascots or something like that. Um, but what I really called in to talk about was um, model three version proximity. Um, I believe this version has the most even placement of elementary schools. It keeps, um, it does keep the largest, the most elementary schools open in our city and um, maintains decent capacity numbers at 78%. The second thing I wanted to mention is um, the staffing pieces, which was presented to the board and the reorganization team. Um, please look again at the numbers and consider adding um, the possibility of a vice principal to elementary school campuses with over 600 students um, or, or even 650 there there's no um, there's there, there's no um, limit now in which would ever achieve a vice principal and as elementary schools are closing they're going to have we're going to have larger populations at our campuses and our administration um, a more uh, administrative support is needed um, Last thing is safeguarding our VAPA program. I wanna see more programs like this in um, AUSD. So if Powell was to be closed, uh, where would the arts program be transferred to? I realize that the greatest asset of the program is the teachers and the staff that implement it. And thus it's not as simple as moving some art or um, theatrical equipment. 
but keep, please keep this program in, in mind as it is an asset to our district. Uh, thank you again for your time and dedication to this very difficult task. Happy holidays. Thank you, Melissa. Next, we have Violet Gonzalez. Good afternoon, um, as is a board of members and community. I'm a Lee Lyon parent, one that's in kindergarten and in first grade. Um, I'm coming today to the board to talk about um, the closing of Lee, which saddens myself and many parents at Lee Elementary. My question is and concern is that many parents that live around Lee are walking parents. We, Lee School is in the middle of Azusa around apartments, condos, and low poverty, which many people walk. My other concern is of the decision of closing Lee and Foothill, the only high school that we'll have in Azusa will be surrounded by closed schools. What kind of message are we sending to our community that we're sending our high schoolers surrounded by closures of schools? And if that does take effect, what will happen? There was one other person, I think her name was um, Griselda Berry. She had such a great idea of what to do with Foothill Middle School if that decision continues of closing that school. Lee Elementary is a very great school, great staff and great teachers. And it's, it's right in the middle of the heart of Azusa of where many people walk to that school. And it saddens me that it would be closing because there's no funding for it. That there's no maintenance that has been up to date, which is saddens that that's not the school's fault. And that's the reason it's closing, which is one of the biggest schools and it will be closing, which makes no sense. But I don't know, I just wanted to voice my concern because it just saddens that that school is being one of the choices to be closed. And it will be sad to see that the high schoolers will be going to a high school surrounded by closed schools from their district. And yeah, I just wanted to voice that concern. Thank you so much for your time and happy holidays. Thank you, Violet. Next, we have George Engel. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Good evening, uh, board members uh, and staff and parents. Um, so, so my main concern is the uh, closing of Lee. Uh, we are new to the district. We moved to Azusa two years ago. And our priority for us as parents was the education of our child. And what, one of the um, uh, main decisions of uh, moving where we live now was the proximity of uh, uh, being so close to the school, which is Lee. And now hearing that the school is... Um, on the list of schools that will close and there's no option that will leave it open, uh, this is a, ma a major concern for me. So I do support every single point that uh, uh, Ms. Cecilia and Alicia um, uh, brought up before. And I am asking that you do not go with any of this uh, 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 plan. Uh, because a lot of the parents that go to Lee or a lot of the students that go to Lee, their parents do walk to school. We are one of them. We walk their son to school. Um, so that will have an impact on us as parents. And any impact on, our, or on us as parents will also impact our students and my son. So I'm asking you to please base your decision and think about how will this impact our, us as parents and the students? And I hope that Lee is not closed. And that is all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, George. Next, we have Anna Valencia. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening, everyone. I come to you from Allington Elementary. I am a PTO member, very involved PTO member. I come to you with our closure. I really recommend that you guys take another look. We are a very well school. We have very well educated teachers, staff, and a wonderful new principal that was added to our school. He has had a lot of changes to our school, which are all for the best. We have a lot of parents right now that are concerned with this also. 
We have a lot of parents that walk. A lot of parents that are talking about if we are closed, they will move their children to the Covina district. I'm not sure if our district itself understands how much they're gonna lose. Also with the rebranding of the two high schools, you're gonna lose so much revenue to the city of Azusa and I would hate for that to happen. So you guys really need to look close at what you're doing because losing Gladstone High School and Ellington, which is on the border of Covina and Azusa, but we are Azusa district. We, our enrollments are going up. We have, I'm, I'm so emotional right now because it saddens me that you guys make us a K-8. We've been a wonderful K-8. I know that a lot of parents feel that a K-8 is kind of odd, but it's wonderful. And if you guys would come, each and every board member, come and meet all our staff, our students, our parents, and see our school, you would also fall in love with it. So I ask you to please consider leaving Ellington open and moving Valleydale over to Ellington and merging them together. Even if you leave us back at a K-5, just reconsider what and how many students you will be losing. That's 99% of our parents I have talked to said they will remove their kids. Thank you and have a good evening and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Anna. Next, we have Alan Friend. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan French. I am a proud graduate of Azusa High School, and I'm just wanted to bring up a couple of points here. Uh, first, I do agree with the previous speaker that I think the board should not make a final vote on reorganization tonight. Um, it is clearly a very emotional issue. It's a very passionate issue among many and with good reason. And there's there has to be another way. There has to be a better way um, for um, to come to a final resolution. Uh, I know this has been a long process. Uh, I know you have had, the board has had a lot of uh, study sessions with this and the reorganization team has met many times as you know we've seen on YouTube. But just given everything I've heard tonight, I think the board should wait to make a final decision. I don't think tonight is the night. Uh, that being said, I do have a couple of other uh, concerns I wish to bring up. I do agree with several speakers that uh, the district might see, for lack of a better term, a backlash um, in terms of enrollment. And we all want enrollment to go up. I mean, we all care about this district a great deal. Um, that being said, I don't believe Foothill should close because of its close proximity to Azusa High. One can certainly make that argument for Slauson because that is nearby too, but Foothill is across the street from Azusa High, and I do agree that closing it does not send a very good message. And on those grounds, I really think Foothill should remain open. And as far as the rebranding or reimagining of Azusa High and Gladstone High, I am in agreement that neither should take place, uh, particularly what Emily Ruiz said earlier. You know, Everybody that goes to Azusa High is proud to say they're from Azusa High, not Canyon City High or, or what have you. And we have a Glendora High, we have a Covina High, we have a Pomona High. Why can't Azusa High remain as is? And the Aztec mascot has been around since the very beginning. I don't see a reason for that to change either. It pays tribute to the Aztec culture. And if you want to change the mascot, that means more money will need to be spent on, um, well, remodeling like in the gym and all over the school. And that can be better served for uh, the education of our students. So 
I am not for the rebranding. I think Azusa High should be left as is, name, mascot, and all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ellen. And I believe last uh, we have Elisa Loeza. Hello, good evening, um, board members, president, cabinet, superintendent. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for the time put into this. I've followed since the beginning the YouTube videos of the reorganization committee. I've been following along, along with all of these meetings as well. I just wanna emphasize one more time, um, I noticed that Longfellow is still mentioned in all of the options um, to be taken out. And from my understanding, going back and rewatching videos, it was said Longfellow was not to be considered. The funding worked differently. That was different. So the committee did not take Longfellow into consideration. Um, and I, I once again want to say, perhaps we can look at the long term if a concern is enrollment, that enrollment starts in preschool. That's what's leading to these issues of higher enrollment of high, in high school. And if we have full day programming, and I believe before COVID began, um, Longfellow had applied for a CDE grant to begin the process for, for full day, full day preschools, if we have the facilities, if we have the leadership, if we have the collaboration on what has been a long time successful school in serving there are little preschool minds, um, just the way high schoolers need their own space, just the way middle schoolers need their own space. Having this space that has been successful that other students from other parts, even if they have Valley Dale near, nearby still want to come to Longfellow. How can we grow the programming and replicate it in other areas and just completely take it off. Um, it wasn't considered in the beginning. I think it shouldn't be rec be considered now and I just wanted to bring that up and I thank you all. Thank you. I, I know the cabinet has been making so many different adjustments and trying to take feedback and all of your effort, everyone's work, the um, it's appreciated. Thank you, good night. Thank you, Salisa. I do believe that that exhausts all of our speakers for the, for the evening. Um, and so with that, we will transition on to 4.0 general functions and specifically 4.1 discussion and decision of school reorganization. Before we begin our, our, our conversation, I'll, I'll say that um, per, kind of guidance from from uh, Carlos our, our, our legal counsel uh, we we will want to be careful in our in our conversation due to the just the vast nature of the, the many things that we're going to be discussing um, that as we're making different motions as we get to the point where we were making different motions and 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 uh, decisions that we are able to kind of parse it out and separate them so that there's extreme clarity on the direction that we're we're given um, Kind of in combination with that, I, I spoke to Mr. Ortega and he, he and, and heard from him laying out what are the pieces that, that are really in need of decision where there is there is need from the board to provide that that uh, decision. And, and so I have some of those things listed out, um, some of which would be in order for us to, to take next steps. If if we're moving forward in that direction, those decisions would need to be made to, today. Some that can wait but would be preferred that there be decisions made and some that actually there are decisions that would be preferred for later. So just to communicate what those are. Um, decisions on secondary is one of those decisions that is critical that we that we discuss and, and come to some, some understanding and give clear vote and direction. Um, we, we've discussed some of this, you know, in regards to Azusa High School as, a, as, as the centralized high school, Gladstone High School as a centralized middle school, but we've not taken a vote. So that will be one thing that we will, we will need to, to take a vote and decide on. Um, and along with that, the transition plan. So is this a, a one-year transition? Is this a two-year transition? Um, we'll need to provide clarity there. The same for number two, which is decision on elementary schools. Um, which sites are we intending to, to keep open? Which sites will consolidate into, into other sites? And uh, as well as the transition plan for that, that a one-year, that a, a, a two-year, uh, we'll, we'll need to give direction. Those are, are the two pieces that, that if we are intending to move forward, that we will need to, to ensure that we're able to give clear vote and direction tonight. Uh, there are a few others, um, branding. We've had some of that discussion already and, and heard a lot of uh, opinions shared. That's one of those things that it would be nice if we were able to, to provide some direction there, but that is something that, that could wait, but would be hearing from staff, it would be preferred that we are able to, to give some direction and vote on that. Uh, another piece um, which could 
these are things that could wait till um, next year. And actually hearing from staff, it would be preferred to wait until after the, the, the new year and, and having further conversation would be Longfellow and exactly what is going to happen with Longfellow. And also as far as programs are concerned, um, for example, the, the middle years program, primary years program, dual immersion, STEM, VAPA, et cetera, all those different programs, I'm giving some direction. So this is what I believe is, a, is, is the list of things that we're needing to give direction on. And again, items one and two, it, it would be most important that we provide vote and direction on those. There is a little bit of some, some wiggle room um, on, on some of the others. So I guess we can, to kind of start things off, we can open up with, um, just leave a little bit of some space to see if there are any general comments that anyone has. Uh, and if, but if there isn't any general comments, then I'd, I'd actually um, walk us through some of these uh, kind of delineated points for us to do. Can I just ask a clarification question? Sure. So you said there was some need to do, some nice to do's, and per, some prefer, preferably. Prefers later. I didn't hear any prefers later. So Longfellow from staff, and we can oh, ask staff to provide. Oh, okay, I thought you said clarity. that was nice. Longfellow okay. and programs um, from, from staff, it would be preferred that we wait until later to make those. Okay, I just missed, I thought that was with a nice. Okay. Sure. So are there any general comments um, broadly that anyone would like to share before we, we go into some of these specific areas? Well, I have something to, to share um, that I've written up. Um, and again, this is just a thought, something shared to bring to the table for us to have this very uncomfortable, you know, conversation that we need to have. Can I please present? Sure. Do you have the privileges to be able to do so? Go for it. While you're pre preparing that, um, Carlos, thank you for, for being here. And we'll, we'll look to you. Please feel free to, to, to chime in if, if, um, and, and, and give any counsel if we're, if we're veering somewhere that, that makes things um, not as, as we're moving forward. And, and I think you, you've already touched on this. Um, having organization and maybe talking this one topic at a time is the best way to keep it clear. Thank you. I would like to go ahead and share this with all of you guys. And like I said, this is just something that I would like to go ahead and bring to the table topic, you know, just for discussion. This is not something that I personally would like to get done. But since we are on the topic of branding, I would like to share this, this model that I would, I went ahead and put together and excuse the writing. I did not get a chance to type it all nice and neat for all of you. But with that being said, I'll go ahead and start with the first column where it says 2021. And that is our school year. So 2021, we make the decision, right, um, by our board to the decision in the secondary uh, vote with middle schools and, and the high school. We've been having the conversation, but we have not finalized and we have not voted on it. And we continue this conversation. If we if we look at the months, May is five months away. Um, June, we have graduations um, and pretty much high, you know, uh, seniors checking out. We look at the next year, tw uh, 2022, 2023. And that is to go ahead and um, close all the, uh, the elementaries that we will decide on. Um, I put three. It could be a different number, and start all the students at their at their new sites, which will be August 2022. Keep middle schools open. Keep sixth grade at elementaries, and um, either in the summer or during the year, depending on staff uh, best see fit, to begin the drop off and pick up of students at elementaries. We had a discussion about how. Um, at some elementaries, the drop-off and pickup is a big mess, and we have plenty of field 
at a lot of the elementaries that will remain open, that can be a topic of conversation for us to, um, you know, think about how we can go ahead and ease this transition as drop off and pick up for parents. And the continued conversation on what to do with elementary sites as they are being vacated. When we look at year 2023, 2024, all high school students to go uh, to move to Gladstone High School. And for that, uh, for that reason um, is because I feel that if we are, if we are looking to make Azusa High our one high school, Azusa High needs a lot of TLC. That quad um, needs some, uh, what is it? Um, it? That whole quad just needs to be done. We're looking, they don't have a cafeteria. The kids are eating outside in the rain. And therefore, they have, you know, there's some classrooms that need to be upgraded. If we are going to make this one high school, let's make it a high school that we're proud of. Let's take the time and not rush things and make sure that we are on the map. And if it takes us two years, and this is what there's model that I'm presenting, it will take two years. We have to go ahead and send, I don't know if you guys um, out in the audience know that we have to send um, our plans to the state and it may take about a year or two years to get approved. That's the reality. I, I, no one's telling you this. I'm letting you know right now. It's going to take a while. We don't know how long. So when we start the upgrades and remodeling at Azusa High School without students, um, I've been told that the students can be there. But what I'm afraid is the safety of our students. I would not like to see students when there's major construction going on at Azusa High as we're upgrading it. Um, and we're putting things into and rolling things in, you know, remodeling it. And I would like to see all of the remodeling done all at once. Therefore, uh, with this model, I am proposing that we do not have students at that time at Azusa High. Since we have had the discussion of having Foothill Middle School be part of our one high school, let's utilize that. Let's go ahead and, and again, this is just a thought. Ninth grade, you know, we can start them off at Foothill Middle School. We will keep seventh and eighth grade at Slauson and Center for the time being um, till 24, 25. Uh, 24, 25, all high school students continue at Gladstone High School, continue the remodeling at Azusa High, because again, we don't know how long these permits are going to take at the state since we are going to do a lot of remodeling. A lot of things that are going to be happening is just not going to be one. Um, one proposal that we're going to send to the state. And therefore, we have to account of the time too that we are going to need. One example that I want to give is when there was a proposal for, and I'm sure all of you guys at Azusa High and Gladstone remember where the bleachers, right? Um, it took like two, three years. And people were upset. We're upset at the district, not knowing what was going on. And from uh, the board at that time and that superintendent, that the proposal was had already been proposed and had been sent to the state. Therefore, it took almost two, three years for us to get approved to get and purchase the new uh, bleachers to purchase the new things. So, you know, with that being said, this is why I'm proposing this. Now we look at 20, uh, 2025, 2026, move all high schools to Azusa High School's new campus. Have a grand opening, have a major party because these students deserve the best and we're willing to give them the best. And at that year, the start of that year as well, all the middle school students will move to the Mega Gladstone High School. And that's when we, that's when Center and Slauson would um, not be uh, hosting our middle school students. 
and therefore we would have to we're, we're closing the name of the schools we still have to speak on what we're going to do with these sites and the conversation you know this is a conversation that's um i think really important for us as as a board and i'm sure we're not going to have it tonight but we we will have it and that is what are we going to do with our empty schools a lot of people have approached me and said well Mountain View has been closed for a long time. You guys haven't done anything. And I understand. I see your point of view. But at the same time, we're going through a major transition. And the conversation needs to be started, needs to begin. So as I present this um, model to you, this is a topic of conversation that I would like to go ahead and have. Um, there's no right or wrong answers. I would love to hear my colleagues' input, suggestions. I know that um, when we did start having this conversation back in January 2019, I was the one that did bring it in. And my colleague um, did stress that I was the one that did stress and bring up the conversation of having one high school. And the reality of it is our, our low enrollment. And this is just not happening in our district. This is happening in a lot of districts throughout California. A lot of school districts are having to close their, some of their schools, having to lease out their, you know, buildings and so forth. So this is something that we are, are we are not alone. We are in this together in our district and with other school districts. And, um, I will stop right there. I have more to say, but uh, if anybody would like to go ahead and um, oh, before before I stop, um, like I said, uh, when I brought up the conversation um, of the one high school, we even threw out like, you know, a 10 year plan and then it went down to a five year plan. And then it went down to uh, during the reconfiguration committee, it went down to a three, then two. I think that what we need to do as a board looking forward is this what is sustainable this is our chance to make things different one thing that i want to bring up at azusa high i know gladstone has their new ada restrooms right by the football field azusa high right by the football field does not have restrooms for their athletes or for when other um, schools come and compete at our Azusa High School. I would love to see our football field have bleachers, right? Stadium bleachers, lights. There's these, these are conversations, you know, that I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, like Adrian would say. But at the same time, you know what? We need to put this out on the table. We need to speak about this. And we need to have real conversations. And I want to thank everybody who spoke tonight. You guys are speaking from the heart, and I appreciate you all. Does anyone have any uh, comments or, or response to the, the proposal that we that, that's here in front of us, or any additional comments to, to add broadly? The only comment I do have on this model, it um, I do not agree with it. It's it's too long, and it's just from my step my opinion. It's very messy, but it's also too long. By the time you, know, you go to 25, 26, that's a lot of shuffling around. Um, so that's my comment on that. And the second one is, I was hoping that you mentioned that we were gonna stay on this timeline. And are we? Are, are you, um, in regards to the five items? Well, that, we just that, spoke about tonight, yes. yeah. So I, I'd, I'd like to talk on those, those five things and we can move there if everybody would, would like to move there. Um, I'm wanting to give an opportunity if anyone has a it has any broad comments to, to make before um, before we move to that. I'm, I'm sorry, done. thank you. I have one more thing to say. And the whole reason I, I, I went ahead and just put this together was to also give the, um, the high schoolers that are at the schools right now um, time to process this as one of our own, um, Mr. Philip came today and, uh, Philip Villa came today and he said, you know, that this is something that 
our freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors are going to have a hard time with. And so this kind of, um, we, we can go ahead and, you know, how can we, let's have a conversation also too, about how can we have these individuals graduate from their respected school where they're attending right now? Um, you know, eighth graders that are coming in, um, K, you know, TK through eighth, um, we'll have some time to process this and we'll understand that regardless of how we vote, whether we vote this way or, or that way, or how long it's going to take for us to be able to go ahead and reconfigure um, our decision in the secondary, both middle, mega, mega middle school and mega high school, um, at least they will be able to go ahead and have that processing um, already and hopefully have the adjustment. Okay, then I will I will look to move us to these to these five items. Um, if what what are the thoughts? I'm I'm, I'm seeing a nod from Shailene. Okay, I'm seeing seeing en enough nods. So we'll go ahead and move then to these to these five items. We'll start with the first one, which is a decision on secondary, um, and so specifically a centralized high school as well as a centralized middle school. Again, I'll remind you that the conversation we have been having is that Azusa High School be the, the, the centralized high school and that the Gladstone High School campus be the centralized middle school. Um, and, and in addition to that, if, if we are looking to make a decision on that, we'll also need to look at a, a transition plan. What, what is the timeline? Is this a one year, two year or, or more? So the, the floor is open on secondary. So we're looking at right now. We're just looking at Black uh, High, so the high one high school and one middle school, right? Well, yeah. So what we're looking, what we'd like to do is is um, have give some clear direction as it pertains to high school ling within the Azusa Unified School District and our and our middle school um, or middle school within the Azusa Unified School District. So I know that we've had conversation, which it, it does seem like we've kind of coalesced around a, a certain concept. But we've not we've not voted, and we've also not discussed clearly um, a transition timeline. So I'll just I'll just jump in there. Please. So um, I mean, based on our previous conversations, where we all I think came to consensus that we felt that Azusa High was the better high school location because of the capacity, and as well as the 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 fact that you have Foothill nearby, which could become an annex, so it gives us space for growth at the high school. Um, I just want to just reaffirm that that I'm committed to that. Um, I do have questions in terms of transition. Um, just in terms, and this is maybe a question for staff. Um, what what do you see the benefit of of not doing it for or pushing it off for a year? But, or what are the the benefits and trade offs of either closing it to start in the year to, to do the transition 2022 23 or to do it in 23 24? Thank you. <clears throat> So the, the proposal, uh, and I can put it up if we need to, but the proposal uh, that we created or the plan that we created uh, would have um, year I'm one. I'm sorry to interrupt. Could you please put it up for the sure. viewers that are that are not here? That way they can actually visual, visually see it. Thank you. Um, so the proposal uh, that we have uh, put forth is that in year one, uh, and that could definitely be 22-23, so next school year, um, is that Glassstone High School uh, would not receive uh, ninth graders. All ninth graders uh, would begin their high school experience uh, at Azusa High School or the Azusa High School campus. Uh, one of the benefits we see that is that that will give us a really good data point. Uh, because then we, we would be able to base all future decisions on what ninth graders showed up, how many ninth graders showed up, what percentage of ninth graders uh, showed up. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, uh, it'll also allow us, uh, unlike elementary, uh, where uh, most of your shift uh, are uh, students, families, um, and staff, uh, the high schools uh, come in addition to that, uh, come with uh, program. Uh, come with equipment, 
uh, come with uh, specialized uh, materials, uh, specialized uh, room needs. And so that would give us the, the breathing room uh, and the planning time uh, to really make sure and ensure that we are using the campus uh, to its full its fullest capacity. Um, and so that's <clears throat> those are the benefits uh, that we saw. And then lastly, um, it would impact this would impact two classes uh, versus impacting uh, three classes. And so uh, for those reasons, um, we we did we our our recommendation is to is to phase in uh, just by one year, right? So we're really talking about closing it the second year. I'm sorry, when you say classes, what classes do you mean? The classes at Glasson High School. What years? Uh, so that would be the class. So current, current ninth graders, right? The current ninth graders. If we just if we just shut it down next year, uh, then all three classes uh, would would be um, would be affected. If we wait the one year for the purposes uh, stated, then uh, a a byproduct or a is that we would only be affecting two classes. Sorry, when you say classes, can you specify what grades? I, I'm, I'm having a hard time. Um, no worries. If we close last on high school next year, right, then uh, the current ninth, 10th, and 11th graders would be affected. If we, if we wait, if we wait one year, uh, then it would only be the current ninth and 10th grade. But that wasn't the that that's that's a a piece. Uh, but really, the ninth grade being a, a really good data point, and then really thinking about facilities, programs, equipment, uh, placing, uh, and those kinds of uh, things as well. Can you speak specifically to the feasibility of of implementing the plan this upcoming year? Is is that even? I know we talked about there's 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 the potential for DSA approval, and if if, there, if there's even classrooms or other facilities things that we need to to address. Can you speak to the feasibility of uh, moving forward this upcoming school year? Yeah, we we feel confident, especially uh, to uh, board member Cruz Gonzalez's uh, kind of um, summary, um, having uh, Foothill Middle School uh, become part of, of the campus, then we feel uh, very uh, confident that this plan uh, would, be, would be feasible uh, to implement and to begin next school year. So would you require Foothill to be closed in order to, to do this transition? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I only say that because I worry about, I mean, then your, your current seventh graders, right? Would, well, they wouldn't move quite. No, because they'd been, but yeah, they'd have to move to another middle school and then they would go to high school. So they would have to, they'd be moving to, okay. Yeah. So is that, is that necessary? Uh, no. Uh, so we, um, we feel uh, that uh, we can actually coexist uh, for that one year. And so um, we would actually alter this and put them on the same uh, plan as Center and Slauson. So just to clarify, when you say coexist, do you feel that we could, we could house all incoming freshmen at Azusa High and not have to put any freshmen at, at the middle school camp? Not necessarily. Um, so <clears throat> the Foothill campus, um, there are lots of ideas. Uh, ninth grade annex is definitely one of them, uh, but there are other ideas uh, that have been uh, kind of floated around and obviously we would bring those to, uh, to here. But uh, when we're thinking uh, right now uh, for the first year, um, we're thinking that uh, the ninth graders uh, would be able to uh, be absorbed in a lot of their core classes. Uh, we still feel that having that ability to have Foothill as a, as, as an annex or as an overflow or as a, um, you know, need um, is, is beneficial. Uh, but we definitely feel that it wouldn't be the entire campus and that, we, that we'd be running into problems with coexisting with Foothill Middles. Mr. Ortega, what is the size of our ninth grade classes at each of the high schools currently? I'm sorry, can you repeat what the question? What is the size of the, how many students are enrolled in ninth grade at both Azusa and at Gladstone currently this, currently this year? 
I do know at the top of my head. I think we can look it up, but I'm going to assume that it's somewhere between uh, somewhere around 250 is, is going to be my guesstimate, but we'll look it up right now at each school. So um, on, on first year, on the first year I'm reading, so you see Foot Middle School will be closed and Center Middle School in Slauson will remain open. So will the Foothill students go to Center or Salt? Lawson, is that I mean is that where they're gonna feed into? That was the original idea. Uh, but we uh, are altering that plan and we think that right, right there where it says Foothill Middle School closed, yes. that that should actually remain open and that it shouldn't close until year two when center when center and Slauson closes. They'll well. go at the same time. Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. So I, I just wanna I I think that. I think I heard what you said and I understand, but I just want to express, I think um, I might be okay with maybe some of the freshmen staying on the campus. I think there's examples around the country where you have seventh, eighth and ninth as a middle high school. Um, but I would have reservations about having some of the classes that have mixed grades, so 10th, 11th, 12th, coming over to Foothill Middle School. So I just want to make sure that's expressed because that would be a concern. And my preference would be that there would be no mingling, right? And then we'd fit all the freshman on the high school campus. I'm sorry, you said high school campus or Foothill? High school camp at Azusa High. That what? Well, that's where we. That in this current model, that's yes. That is. Um, we have your data. So GHS currently there's there are 234, and AHS 251. So, Mr. Ortega, um, let let's assume that the class of 2026? Is that next year's ninth graders? I'm doing the math. The income, next year's ninth graders are the class of 2026. That's my math as yeah. well. Okay. So can the Azusa High School campus take 500 ninth graders as is on the Azusa High School campus given its current capacity? Well, we believe so. Um, but again, we we would want to to have the um, the backup of Foothill Middle School as we're thinking about that campus, um, because again, as we're trying to imagine that it's not just the 250 students or 234 in this case, right? Uh, students, if that if that were the number next year, uh, that it's also about specialized programs, specialized equipment, um, and so. Um, as we're thinking about those things, and of course we would be bringing this would be uh, uh, ever every meeting update on 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 how these things are are happening. Um, having Foothill Middle School as a uh, as a campus um, that's part of Azusa High School uh, just relieves um, and, and helps have that safety net there um, as we start to unravel things that we might not be thinking about right now. And also, have you um, thought about um, when Board Member Honest mentioned regarding the DSC approval? Have Have you thought about you know how long they will take to make this transition? And and not you know, not on every item, but some we will need a DSC approval permit. Correct. That is correct. Um, probably step number seven there. Um, if, if just thinking out loud um, is. Um, how we're going to use uh, our funds and uh, make decisions uh, on those funds. Um, uh, to your point, board member Rodriguez Pena, um, there are things uh, that will have to be DSA approved and there are things that don't have to be DSA approved. And so as we begin those conversations about how to utilize uh, the remaining uh, Measure K uh, and other uh, funds that are available for facilities, um, then we'll be looking to the board for um, prioritization on that. And would you please, um, would you mind if you mention, uh, mention to the community, what is a DSA approval? Thank you. Sure. Uh, DSA is the Division of State Architects. Uh, so any uh, construction or uh, building on public school sites uh, requires uh, that we submit our plans 
uh, to the Division of State Architect uh, for approval uh, to make sure that uh, the plans are uh, up to all of the most current codes um, and beyond. And so whenever um, we submit for a plan, then uh, other parts of the campus uh, are looked at uh, as well uh, to make sure that, again, we are up to the, the most current codes. So it would be similar to a permit you get on your house when you're going to add an addition to, to a room or, right? 1,000%, that is a, a perfect uh, analogy. Thank you, Mr. Singer. I have a question on, on the DSA approval. So what we're telling our community is that, um, I just wanna be transparent, is that you have already investigated during this COVID time when people are not in their offices and they're working from home and they're getting these DSA um, uh, approved, that we're not gonna have any step back. Is that what you're saying? Can you further clarify what you mean by oh, we're not going to have setbacks? So, given the history that um, not just this district, but in general of getting the approval, right? At times, and I gave the example for you know um, Gladstone High School and Azusa High School, the bleachers, the restroom, the ADA compliance. We were out of compliance. It took more than three years, and it wasn't during COVID. So we are during, you know, this is during COVID. We're still, you know, during COVID, people are, are, are teleworking. So are we sure that we're going to be able to go ahead and get these approved to move forward on a timely manner as we are speaking about a timeline at this time? So cannot assure for uh, an outside entity. Um, DSA sometimes approvals uh, go quick and sometimes uh, they go fast. Uh, Latasha, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the uh, the Glassstone High School uh, bleachers is a perfect example how you submit for DSA and then they find out that close proximity, there's restrooms. And so now you have to bring those up to code uh, as well. Um, and so um, those are hard to, to or difficult to anticipate. Uh, but, but we, again, uh, with the direction and the vision uh, we we're ready to to move forward in that direction, whatever that that may be, uh, which is uh, you know still unknown at this at this particular moment. Ms. Jamal, can you um, speak to is it would it be possible when we get ready to submit any DSA plans to retain an expediter to help facilitate the process of approvals? Um, so yes and no. So it's not so much that we need to expedite the process. Um, so. Just to go back, to take three years, it's, it's not that when you submit the plans, it takes three years. It's when you submit the plans for one project, then they assess your other facility, then they identify other things that you have to do in order to make, make that happen. So it's not that it takes them three years to approve the plan, but it could be that you just want to modernize uh, building A. But to look at it, you have to make sure your entire campus, and then they give you a punch list of all the things you have to, uh, um, all the things you must complete in order to do building A. Um, but right now, um, we're seeing that um, DSA approval is about a year. Um, it could be longer, but a year's time right now is because they're, most of them are still working from home in COVID. But typically, you can submit DSA approval, and you can get them within six months to a year. And do we have an outstanding punch list of items to improve? We have a list of items. And so what we're currently working on our current architect is to identify um, items that we must do for safety and items that they recommend and then items that are just a wish list. And we're also going to identify on that list what requires DSA because not everything requires DSA. But I clearly identify, okay, if we want to do this, it requires DSA. Once we get the go ahead, we'll draw up the plans and get those submitted. Thank you. So I, no, I just just for the, if we had a parking lot, I would say fun parking lot. But I do think um, this is a good line of direction to have. We should we need to have a conversation and a study session around facilities and around our bond, right? Especially if we're going to make decisions hopefully tonight, then we can have clarity about how we move forward with the, the current dollars that we do have. And one, one thing I would add is in, in regards to the outside entity that is DSA and our inability to control just, just the process and the timeline, with that in mind, I, I, would, I would say that that should move us to be, um, to expedite things on our end 
because we know that things can, may, may be unintentionally protracted dealing with an external agency, I, I would suggest that it would not be most wise to delay our process and then compound it with the potential delay of, of an outside agency. I, I think it would make the most sense for us to, to look to, to, to make these decisions as is most wise and makes the most sense within our, uh, for, for our district, and then um, submit those things in hopes that, that they will be approved um, expediently. I do have just one more question, Adrian, and that is around the, the marquee programs that we do have at Gladstone High School, right? Um, I do want to say that I'm, I think we as a board are very proud of some of our most successful programs that are at Gladstone High School, right? Our early college, um, our medical pathway, which is, you know, um, um, it's just, it's been a wonderful program and been so um, well implemented. So have we thought about the impact? I know you talked about there's special if, um, equipment and stuff. So we, so what, what is the impact on those programs and probably our other career technical education programs in within this transition plan? Um, in terms of, again, this one year, um, would give us the, the ability, uh, to ensure, like, again, you, you mentioned those two are perfect examples. Uh, the, uh, Jim Higgs uh, program. I mean, he's got constructed a whisper room. Right, he's got the the green screen and all that. Um, so we want to be able to to envision and have the time to to really think about where is the best fit for that and 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 draw up the plans of when that's going to happen, so that it has minimal impact and you don't have a class at as a high school, but yet you don't have the you know the the equipment or 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 the room and they want to do the podcast or whatever or the what is it called the the table um, and you know, yeah. Um, and so that's why that's why we feel that uh, by just bringing the ninth graders, that'll allow us enough time to really plan those out to have as minimal impact as possible uh, to transition those programs over to Azusa High School. Yeah. So are there, I mean, we, like we, we could, we may be ready or to the point where we could entertain a motion um, if, if the motion were to include for, for high schools and, and middle schools, um, a, a timeline. Um, does, does anyone else have any, any thoughts or anything to, to add in regards to um, a, a specific timeline, whether it's a one year, two year, or, or more? And to, by saying one year, meaning implementing it this upcoming fall of 22, or having a plan that, that is implement, fully implemented the second year out, which would be fall of 23. I actually like this plan that Superintendent Ortega or his cabinet have made out on the proximity three. Don't even think about. So can I? Um, so I'll make a motion, and I would just I'll just say this by saying I came in here want thinking we should just close it and just you know, um, do a hard transition. But I think um, I appreciate the input, the feedback that I've heard from this from you, Arturo, in terms of the rationale of doing it, doing it a staggered closing. So. Um, I will make a motion that we will close. Um, so, like, and maybe you can say, it, Adrian, but we would close Gladstone High School in 20. We would. We would remember, Cruz Gonzalez. How would you? Yeah. And can I just interrupt one second? Just based on the feedback from the board members. And it's we, you know, we can't, you're cutting in and out. Based on the feedback from the board members, and it's completely each board member's prerogative. One suggestion may be to keep the motion separate in terms of the school decision that's made and keep that separate from the timeline. That may help us down the road if somebody's in agreement on the main motion, but not necessarily the timeline. I just wanted to put that out there before any motions are made. Okay, so then the motion is to close or to consolidate the high schools into one campus at Azusa High School and then eventually consolidate all the middle and, and then consolidate the middle schools into one campus on the Gladstone High School. That, that would be, I think, I feel like that was the consensus we came upon a month ago. So, second. The so motion in, uh, by board member Cruz Gonzalez and second by board member um, Rodriguez Pena is to consolidate the high school campus over to the Azusa High School location and, uh, and consolidate the middle school campuses onto the, the Gladstone High School campus. As, a, as an initial motion. Any discussion? Can, can I ask for a clarification? 
So all that we're going to be doing is just voting on the consolidation of the schools, not the timeline, not the rebranding. Correct. Anything. Okay. Those are separate separate things that we 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 may address. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. President, I have a clarifying question for legal. Um, so uh, I want to clarify, and please guide me on the best way to do this. If this is a substitute motion, or if this of what I need to do, um, I'd like to be able to clarify that the motion is for the middle school for grades six, seven, and eight to operate on the Gladstone High School campus for clarity instead of just saying middle school because our current middle schools are for grades seven and eight. And I think I I, I will amend the, the original motion to clarify that we're referring to a middle school that contains the grades six, seventh, and eighth. And Yolanda, do you agree to that, to that yeah, amendment? Yeah, yes. So, that's, then, yeah, so that, that, that's the main motion now. And then probably if you're going that route to add the high schools from... 9, 10, 11, 12, is that? Yeah, that's right. That's I mean, just based on both campuses, what grade levels will be um, on the campus? Yes. So that, okay. do you want to repeat it, Adrian? And, and I'm looking at all this as, as Board Member Cruz Gonzalez revising her original motion. She's got the agreement of the original second. So the clarifications provided to Board Member Bo, I think we're, we're on the right course. That sounds correct to me as well. So if there's no additional discussion, I suppose we'll do a hand vote. Can you for, just restate the motion, please? Yeah, so, so the, the motion would be, uh, the, the initial motion would be that we consolidate all of the, both high school campuses, uh, student, student bodies and populations uh, over to one location at Azusa High School, and that we would consolidate our middle school campuses uh, and populations over onto Gladstone High School's campus and that that would include sixth grade up through eighth grade for, for that uh, middle school transition. So if there's no additional discussion, then we'll move to a, a vote. Board member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. Board member Bo? Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board member Arianes? Yes. And I am also a yes. So that initial motion passes, passes five to zero. The next uh, item on this area that we would, we would need to discuss then is the transition plan or timeline. So again, there is a implementation that begins in fall of 22, uh, just under a year from now, or full imp implementation as is recommended by staff that would, that would begin uh, the second year out, fall of 23, or any other additional um, suggestions or motions. And, and again, one, one, I'll defer to the board members on their individual, individual motions, but these timelines can also be separated by the high school and by the middle school. And I understand there's a lot of moving parts. Would you recommend that they are, or are you just suggesting that they, they, that they can be? I wanted to remind the board members that they can be. I'll defer to staff as to how those moving parts work, but it might be easier for everybody to track exactly what they're voting for and when, and then it may diminish the, the need for revisions of motions and, and amendments. I, I would prefer that as well. Okay, so we'll move to high school. We'll look at high school only for, for this term. Board President, can you give like 90 seconds of processing time? Yes, absolutely. Um, let's, can we change the, the, someone is looking at something. Another 10 seconds. Okay, 
Okay, so seeing as this is, I mean, it's, it's info action. We're, we're kind of having somewhat of, of, of a fluid conversation. Is there any, are there any other questions or is anyone ready to make a motion as it pertains to the high school transition in time? I'm happy to make the motion, but I'm also happy to defer to someone else if you want to make the motion. Um, <clears throat> I move that we, that the timeline for high school transition would be to have all members of the class of 2026, which is next year's ninth grade class, begin at Azusa High School with Gladstone High School campus serving only grades 10 through 12. So the class of 2023, class of 2024, and class of 2025 remaining at the Gladstone High School campus in the 22-23 school year. Can we clarify? Well, let me second first. So I second. So motion is that. The timeline would include all of the class of 2026 to, to move to the Azusa High School campus beginning fall 22. Fall of 22. Yes. Uh, Mr. Ortega, is, um, can we get like an Excel chart put up so we can be like, the years and the classes that we can visualize this a little bit better. At least I think it would help me. Is there any discussion? I would just like can to you ask. Can that again, for, um, please? Clarification. Yeah, so, so to clarify the motion and the second is that beginning in, beginning in fall 22, all ninth graders from both from each of the two high schools would move to the Azusa High School campus, and that Gladstone High School would retain on, only its current um, class of 23, 24, and 25. Now, for clarification, so would we would we then assume that the current 10th, 11th, and 12th graders would would graduate from Gladstone High School? I need clarification. Would you want to clarify your... Or, or, or what, why don't we have staff answer that question? I'm so sorry. Um, based on the current... Let me finish this right here. Sorry about that. No worries. Could you also make it a little bit bigger too? Because the people in the back can see. This is what this is what we currently right now have in our proposal. Uh, so the Azusa High School campus uh, would host ninth or twelfth grade from here on out. Uh, the Glassstone High School campus would host tenth or twelfth graders next school year. The following year, they would be a six to eight campus. And so, Gabriel asked the question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you repeat your question, please? Yes. So my question is, are we assuming then, hold on, let me see what you wrote. And, and just to clarify, the current motion didn't necessarily adopt that model as staff has identified. So I don't know if board member Bo wants to clarify that that was her intention to adopt that plan where you have the 10, 11, 12 moving over in subsequent years. I think this is the only thing that we haven't adopted is six through eight. The other piece was part of her motion. So maybe just get rid of six through eight because we haven't talked about that timeline. -wise. Yeah, and, and that kind of threw me off because we did not talk about that. So then my question was, then are we assuming that we are going to phase out 10, 11, and 12, meaning that they're going to graduate from Gladstone High School? Board person, I'd like to amend my motion. I would like to amend my motion. Carlos, do I say it all over again? And technically, I think you're revising your motion, okay. but you're revising your motion, I believe, to adopt the plan that staff has identified, clarified here, unless I'm 
I'm probably jumping ahead of things, but go ahead, board member. Okay. Bo. Um, I'd like to revise my motion um, for, to, to be the fault to be as follows. So for the 22-23 school year, uh, Azusa High School will serve grades 9 through 12. The Gladstone High School campus will serve grades 10 through 12. And in the 23-24 year, Azusa High School will continue to serve grades 9 through 12. And the Gladstone High School campus will transition to being a middle school campus serving grades 6 through 8. Can I accept that revision? Any other discussion before we vote? I think, I don't think it's anybody's that answered Gabriela's question or clarified that. So based on, uh, first and foremost, that was not our assumption. Our assumption based on the plans that we created um, is exactly what you see here. Um, I'll just fill it out. This was, this was, these were the plans that we brought forth that are on your attachment. This is how it would, it would, it would go. I do think that Board Member Bo's motion does answer Gabri um, Board Member Adi on this question. Okay, then we'll go ahead and vote. Board Member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. Board Member Bo? Yes. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board Member Arianes? No. And I am a yes. I would like to go ahead and speak on why I'm saying no. Sure. Can I be given that right? So, yeah, let me just say that. So the motion passes four yes to one, one no. Um, please go ahead. So as I presented the model today, um, which is perfectly okay, there was no discussion on it. Um, I was wanting to have a conversation, but as the conversation continued um, and the motions are going, I, that is why I said no. I think we need a little bit more time. I, I do have um, some notion that just like before, there's some things that are going to happen with all these shifts in less than two years, not only with staff, students, with everything that we need a little bit more time. Maybe not the five years, but perhaps another year or so. Therefore, that's why I voted no. Thank you. Okay. So still within this, this first uh, major area, we, we also need to look in at, at our middle school uh, um, Middle, middle school direction and voting that we're, that we're giving. So is there any discussion or emotion as it pertains to middle school campus? So let, let me say, I, I don't, I do believe that we've separated. We already, there is already a motion, one motion on the floor, I believe that, that or, or, that has already passed that speaks to both high school and middle school. So then there's just a motion on the timeline, I, I believe, for middle. So is there any discussion or timeline as it pertains to our middle school composition? So I'll make a motion that we close Center Middle School, Fort Mill Middle School, and Lawson Middle School. Well, well, excuse me. Well, close them for the 23, wait. 23-24 school year um, and consolidate them at the Gladstone site for the 23-24 school year. But all schools will remain open just for clarity for the 22-23 school year. And then uh, just to clarify, sixth grade then would remain on the elementaries for the 22-23 school year and transition directly to the the as we're calling it, the mega middle school. Although I will point out that even at that size, it's smaller than many of the middle schools in our area. That is correct. But we mean mega is fantastic programs, fantastic school, fantastic field, volleyball courts. That's what we mean, mega. I second that motion. I mean. um, I, so I, remember yeah, I didn't, I, I don't expect the mega to be in the actual motion. So just to, into the middle school. <laughs> the last school. school. Erase that part. <laughs> Okay, so any additional discussion? Then we'll go ahead and vote. Oh, sure. Very fine question. Um, <clears throat> so what, in this scenario, if Azusa High School requires any overflow space, Mr. Ortega, what will that look like at Foothill Middle School or any other school site? 
Um, so right now, um, we definitely would uh, have the preference of Foothill Middle School. Uh, Foothill Middle School uh, with only seventh and eighth graders uh, there on campus uh, really only um, use uh, half of the campus uh, at that. And so uh, we would, again, coexist. Um, we hear loud and clear uh, board member Cruz Gonzalez's uh, concerns. Um, and so any coexisting would would take that into account, like no commingling. Uh, we can even put up some temporary um, fencing or or barricades or something like that to to make sure that that we keep it that we keep it separate if that's that's what we need. Uh, but it, it would be a coexistence just for year 22-23 at Foothill Middle School. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Tegan. I, I do want to speak into the record. So I do agree with board member Cruz Gonzalez and perhaps others in this room um, about ensuring the separation of our seventh and eighth graders from our ninth through twelfth graders. Um, and I trust you and your staff and all you know, staff district wide to really um, look diligently at decisions and how spaces are best used in a transition year so that we are um, making the most considering school students and their movement on and among and between campuses and ensuring that if we're making upgrades for a year, really asking ourselves, are those the right upgrades to make for a year or are they upgrades that we'll need for uh, the foreseeable future? And, and I just wanted um, to add to that regarding the busing and the transportation for the students from all these different schools, with all these things that are going on, that we have a, a transition that um, couldn't benefit the community and the walking parents that they've, they've been uh, speaking about. And, and also even the bus stops, where they're going to be, we mentioned, you know, the uh, middle school is not like close to the high school. But, you know, we have to look at the whole picture, right? But I also would like the buses, if feasible, to be at the school sites where the students already go to pick it up and drop off because they're used to going to that location and, and, and maybe easier. For the parents to walk them to that location. Thank you. I have I have one more request, and that is um, a request that we reach out to the city of Azusa um, and see see how we plan out um, crossing the crossing Rockvale. Um, so where I work down in Long Beach, there's a school in the middle of downtown Long Beach, and during the day they actually have fences and they close off that one block where the kids are going, I think it's an elementary school going from one side of the street to the other. So I would really appreciate if we explore with the city what potential what possibilities we have for that crossing. Um, I will just, I will say, and it was well before my time or anybody on city council's time, um, at one point when they were talking about trying to build a stadium, there were conversations around even removing that part of Rockvale to be able to have space for some, you know, to give field space. So just put that out there too, right? Because I think, I mean, as we see with the Metro going in, they, you know, they closed off Alameda to create space for the community, right? So for the Metro to come through, so just think about that. Not that we're demanding anything, but, you know, hoping that we can explore with city council what, what options we have for that space between, the, between those two campuses. And board member Cruz Gonzalez, I'm happy to report that those conversations have already started just as a preliminary, like, hey, just FYI, maybe somewhere, but we'll continue with those conversations. And can I just add to that, please? Um, doing the, when we did the walking path in front of Lee School and Azusa High School, uh, Park Street, uh, Rodecker, Lee, those are across from the um, Azusa High School campus, and there's no um, crossing guards, there's no stop signs. You just have to run across. And I know these are concerns of the community um, that the students that go to Lee and to Azusa High School. So I, I'm sure if you spoke to City Manager, he, he'll be aware of that they were working on, you know, how can they make it safer, you know, with stop signs or crossing guards or, or what have you. So this would be a good time. Okay. And uh, speaking on what uh, board member Rodriguez Pena is saying, I think the conversation of having crossing guards overall, um, I know we're not talking about all the other schools, but as we are increasing the enrollment in both the uh, mega high school and the mega middle school at the, you know, and not just in Rockville, but as the students are going to the middle school at Gladstone High School, that's a very busy mm -hmm. narrow highway. And um, I know it's not, a I mean, half of it 
half of Air Highways is Thuza, half of Air Highways Covina. So, um, Arturo, um, I don't know who you would have a conversation with either a Sousa or Covina to make sure as, you know, if parents drop off their kids a block away, um, as some parents do on Arrow Highway, that we would have, um, we're talking about sixth graders now crossing Arrow Highway in, in large bunches of groups. And, um, and sometimes cars do not see the students and I would not like to see something happen to our students. So I would encourage that we have that conversation with Covina as well to have crossing guards there. Well, well you've seen that four way stop that new signal that is there, right? And that's been very helpful um, going into the school after school and before school. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I, I have, but um, at the, I think the crossing guard, you know, having little sixth graders there on Arrow Highway worries me. Um, our, our students worry me to, to be able to cross that, you know, and so let's have a conversation on that. Okay, so I do. So there is a motion and second on, on the floor um, that, and I'll, I'll restate it and then call the vote, that beginning in 22, fall 22-23, um, Center Middle School, Foothill Middle School, and Slauson Middle School will remain as they are with 7th and 8th grade. And that beginning in the 23-24 school year, those three campuses will be closed and consolidated into the Gladstone High School uh, campus as the one and centralized middle school campus in the Azusa Unified School District. Board Member Greer, can I ask a question? As part of that motion, was there also a clarification that beginning in 22-23, all sixth graders will now transition to the mega Gladstone, but not? Okay, that's not my understanding. No. Okay, then we'll go ahead and move to a vote. I can I ask for clarification because that, that's what I heard. 2022, 2023, sixth grade state elementary, and then 23, 24, they all consolidate. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. So 22, 23, our middle school campuses would stay as is, which is seventh through eighth grade. And 23, 24, those three campuses would close and consolidate into the Gladstone High School campus uh, as the one centralized middle school in the Azusa Unified School District. Okay. Board Member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. Board Member Bo? Yes. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board Member Arianes? Yes. And I am also a yes. So the motion passes five to zero. So that, that gets us through the, the first major block there's there's still a second one um, now looking at elementary schools and so again we can uh, we, we can separate this looking at middle school site and then uh, after we look at excuse me thank you elementary uh, elementary school sites and then after we look at elementary school sites we'll, we'll take a second open up to a second motion on on the timeline so is there any discussion um, to, to be shared in regards to which which sites to oh to have open and which which sites to, to close and consolidate. So, uh, are we looking at the the models that were given to us, the model three, and the proximity three, and are we working off these and the model northwest east west? So yeah, those. So those we're working off. Yeah, so those are three models that have been provided to us from staff that we can use as a as a starting points, so we can make recommendations from there um, and or alter them as as we see uh, appropriate. Mr. Take, I have a question. Will you review for us the, the differences between the proximity proposal versus the quadrant north, south, east, west proposal? Yes. <clears throat> uh, and I think it's better suited uh, using the map. So I'm going to transition there. Okay, so this is uh, the north, uh, west, northeast, southwest, southeast model um, that that we brought forward. The idea here was that there would be a school uh, in the four quadrants uh, of the city. The proximity model is identical to this model, except 
that it keeps Magnolia open. So the idea in the proximity one was that we were looking at schools that were that were relatively close to each other. And then based on those schools saying, OK, of those two schools, then which one. Which one would we keep open? So in this case, Powell and Magnolia, uh, because the size of Magnolia, um, we chose we chose Magnolia. So the only difference between the two models is Magnolia. The proximity model keeps Magnolia open uh, for the east side, if you will, um, where the northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast um, does not keep Magnolia open. Thank you, Mr. Tega. Can you uh, further comment on, if we're looking at the southwest quadrant of the district among Paramount, Valleydale, and Ellington? Yep. Um, specifically, why Valleydale and not Ellington? Or vice versa. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so for the same exact reason, uh, when you look at uh, Valleydale uh, compared to Ellington in terms of uh, the size and the capacity, uh, that's why we chose Valleydale. So I do, I do want to express the concern. And do you, do you mind going back to the, I don't know what, just the proximity one? I don't know. Not this that is, one. Not that one. Or maybe that one. Either that one or. Yeah, no, go back to the, the one you had beforehand. So I will. And, I, you know, I know we've had a lot of discussions. But I'm just curious in terms of thinking about where then school boundaries will be, right? And where um, density of housing and density of student population live. And I, and I get a concern because as we think about Azusa, I think generally we think of this break between Foothill North and South, and then also below the freeway. And so what I see in this, there's no, where there's a large density of apartments and people who live in, in multi-generational housing, between Azusa, between Foothill Avenue and the freeway, we don't see a school. And I, I mean, I understand the rationale thinking we're gonna, you know, we'll save money because Dalton has not been modernized. Um, and I mean, excuse me, that Lee's not been modernized and that Dalton has been partially modernized, right? And so that will save us money. But I get concerned about um, um, keeping at least low, I mean, trying to keep community, I don't wanna say community-based, but schools in communities with dense populations. And I feel, that when I go around this, this district, I see more walking and people living in close proximity to Lee School than necessarily Dalton. Um, and so I don't know how that fits in this conversation because it's not something that's on a map, but I just wanted to express that concern. And I, the thing that brought it to me was when we did our map for our voting for our voting positions, right? And you could see at one point that it, you can actually fit every pretty much everybody above Foothill in one of five five voting districts. And that just tells me in terms of where the density of population just population is in our city. So I just wanted to put that out there for us to think about. So I'll go ahead and add, and but I, I've I have I have the exact same concern. Uh, and and as I look at at this map and as I look at this composition, I continue to feel that there there does appear. Geographically, as we're looking at where schools would be placed, it would make the most sense. There was a there was a school campus that was placed near the where, where Charles Lee is currently located, and I know that that's one of the things that, that we're looking at considering. Let me also say, for for full disclosure, my daughter attends Charles Charles Lee. She's in fifth grade, and um, ba based on these plans of what, what we're looking at, she would be out uh, next year, and 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 therefore wouldn't be affected by this herself. Um, my my concern is not is not about her necessarily. My, my concern is about, about that, that community and that, that surrounding area. Uh, and, and just recognizing that there, there, is a, there is a dense population and it's a dense population where there are a lot of walkers and, that, and, and looking at the distance where they, where they would go. Um, I, 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 I don't see how this provides a, a viable um, option for, for that. If, if I stand corrected, um, 
were when we looked at the you know the sustainability and how much it would cost to to remodel Lee. Could you please um, speak on that? Yeah, I can pull that up. I I, I think it was yeah. There's schools as well. Yeah, I think it was like five five to seven million dollars. Is that correct, Patricia? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere between five to seven million dollars. Uh, again, um, under nor uh, again that aside, uh, we agree. We feel that Lee is a bigger school, um, and 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 serves a better purpose uh, in terms of again capacity. Um, that number, that five to seven million dollars, just um, influenced us to say that that's a lot of money to bring it up just to where Dalton is at right now. And so that's why we chose Dalton, but we do see that Lee is a, is a larger campus um, and uh, it does serve a, a different uh, um, um, geographical uh, area uh, as well. Also, just, just for clarity, because I'm looking at, the, at, our, at our board update, so the, the numbers that are listed for Lee to bring it up to where um, Dalton is, is listed at 3.4 million to 5.7 million. Okay, stand corrected then. Say that again, please. Three point four to what? It's in, yeah, it's in the December tenth uh, update, but it's three point four million to five point seven million. And and then how much? I mean, in order to complete the modernization at Dalton, what what does that require? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know, Latasha, if you don't, if you know uh, what's left right now, um, are the uh, classroom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, classroom uh, upgrade. Yes, and their DS, um, their plans have already been sent to DSA for approval. So it's just a matter of. Do we have an estimated cost of that? Um, give me one second. I can pull that up. While she's looking that up, then obviously that would be an add-on to, to Lee as well, right? We want we would want to upgrade uh, the classrooms as well. So, I mean, while she's looking that up, then I mean, you answer my other sort of. I didn't ask her this question, but I'll ask this question. And so, where do we anticipate that those students that are now, because we closed Mountain View, right? So now, where would those students from between Mountain View all the way over to Powell? So everything in Azusa between Foothill and the and the between, between Foothill Boulevard and the freeway. Where would those students in your mind? And, and I'm, I know it will change, right? But where in our your initial thinking, where would those students be going to school? So we're talking about Lee specifically. No, I'm talking about. I mean, you're going to be shifting attendance boundaries, right? So where would where would these students be going? So right now, if we're looking on the west side of Azusa, uh, between Foothill and the 210, um, I believe that was um, a lot of the uh, previous and a little bit north of uh, Mountain View. Mm -hmm. And so those students, uh, for the most part, we, we do have a lot of, in our district, <clears throat> all of our schools have a lot of students from a lot of different schools, uh, uh, from a lot of different schools in our district, which is great that we allow uh, choice in that, in that matter. Uh, but the original thought was that would, they, would, they would move to, to Paramount, uh, to Hodge, and for those that were interested, would move to Valleydale. So we feel that right now, that particular population is already at, a, at, at one of those schools. And so we don't feel that there's going to be a lot of movement there. The movement happens on the east side uh, of Azusa. And so right now, uh, the idea would be that they would be moving to either Dalton, uh, Magnolia, uh, Paramount, or Murray. You would... So we would be having asking students because Murray's pretty far south for it is specific, mm -hmm. and so is Magnolia. I believe it's about I think it's about a mile. So what would the distance to Dalton from Lee to Dalton? I mean, we're talking about 
Levy in particular? I don't know specifically. Obviously, we can do that real quick, but I don't know specifically. Do you have a... I have the figure. So in 1819, um, the bond commitment project showed $5.2 million allocated for Dalton. Is that 5.2 just for the modernization of the classrooms? For Dalton um, Elementary modernization, 5.2, and that was in 1819. My clarifying question, though, is that 5.2 to modernize Dalton, period? Yes. That was actually the subject line on the um, bond project. It shows Dalton Elementary modernization, $5.2 million. So does that mean that's in addition to what we've already spent or we've already spent toward that? Uh, so that one, a different way, what do you mean? So has, has modernization, some modernization already taken place at Dalton? Not in the classroom. So modernization will be upgrading classroom and buildings. So we've done underground utilities and items such as that. The, so, que the question on the floor, though, is that 5.2 million, does that include fire alarms, fencing, underground does it include all of that or no it's 5.2 is only for modernizing the classrooms i would have to research more but my first instinct is going to say it only includes modernization because there was always a breakout for fire alarm there was always a breakout for underground utilities and then they had modernization but i will double check to confirm to make sure i'm not giving the wrong information I would ask as we continue to have facilities updates, if we could level set on our terminology when we say modernization, what are we what do we mean? Because mm -hmm. I've been operating under the understanding that modernization includes both classrooms, roofs, utilities, HVAC, quads. Um, but I think we need I, I I would like to level set on what we mean when we say modernization. Mr. Ortega, I have the uh, distance difference between Charles B. Elementary School and Dalton Elementary School. It is, it is 0. 0.8 miles. Zero, 0. 0.8 miles. Did you similarly, similarly happen to look at Lee the Magnolia? I can do that right now. The difference, the, the distance between Charles Lee and Magnolia Elementary is uh, 1.6 miles. Any other comments, question, discussion? Okay. And is there a motion? I'm sorry. I'm um, you know, um, it's great that we're having this conversation. It's a candid and real conversation, but I, you know, um, one of the things that, you know, that I heard today, I didn't hear, um, Dalton parents speak, but I, I know that a lot of parents do walk their kids to Dalton as well. We have section eight, um, you know, at close to Lee, we have section eight close to Dalton. So this is a very hard decision because we do have it both, you know, the proximity of um, the, the apartments next to these schools. We have parents that will need, no matter what, where the decision lands, um, they would need bus. So we have two vulnerable, um, uh, you know, we have vulnerable families at both. And um, I, I think we need to look at um, being able to make the best decision for, you know, that is sustainable. One of the things that when the DSA approval, you said it was um, submitted in 1819. And are we just getting it back or when can we start? Has it been approved or where, where does I, that stand? I didn't identify a date that when DSA approvals were submitted. I'm sorry, you gave a date of 1819. I just said right now, 1819 identifies the amount that was allocated for um, Dalton okay. modernization. Got it. So no, there has been no DSA approval. Dalton has been DSA approved. It was previously submitted and we received approval this year, but I can't give you the exact date they were submitted. 
How long did it take the DSA approval? I would have to look into that was before my time. Okay, so just to, just so I'm processing this correctly, so in 1819, you're saying that 5.2 million dollars were allocated to modernize Dalton. Correct. That's, okay, and and just to clarify, I'm not saying that was the year that it was allocated. I'm looking at the allocation that was presented in 1819, and that was the amount that was budgeted for Dalton. Budget. And then I can clarify uh, for Board Member Vo, modernization is just for modernization. Dalton has a separate line for a fire alarm, and they had a separate line for underground utilities. And that's the same for all the other schools. So, so it's broken out. So modernization is just for the classrooms and upgrades to facility buildings. So utilities and fire life safety are separate? Yes, ma'am. Based on how it was budgeted out, it's a separate line item. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then my, and my next question is, so for Magnolia, um, we have the max capacity, but how many students do we anticipate? Let's say we went with model, the one with Mo Magnolia, proximity. Um, um, how many students do we anticipate attending Magnolia in the, the year after we close, roughly? I can give you the enrollment projections, but I can't project out what students Yeah, to go. yeah, that's fine. Give me that's one second. Want. Yes, ma'am. And this is Magnolia? Right. So this this is just for current pop, the current student population. Is, is that just to clarify? So right now, for the next school year, 22-23, we're projecting Magnolia to have 334 students. And Powell? Two hundred and ninety So I'm going to make a motion um, and, you know, this may, it may get, we'll see where it goes, but I do want, so I want to make a motion um, to approve a model that includes that. I'll just name the schools um, and I won't use a title for it, um, but it, it'll be aligned primarily to the proximity one. So a, 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 um, a motion where we keep up in Victor Hawk, Valleydale, Paramount, Murray, Magnolia and Dalton, and not, excuse me, not Dalton, and Lee School. Um, and I, I say that because I'm still very much concerned about density of student population um, and, and what that, what the impact ha that that has in terms of having this, having a desert in the middle of this, in the middle of the city and have schools concentrated either north at the north end or the south end of the, of the, of the district. So that is my motion. Board member Cruz Gonzalez, can you please repeat the, the schools again? Ortega, can you type that out on the screen, please? Hodge, Paramount. I'm just going, I'm going counterclockwise. Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Magnolia, and Lee. For visuals, it's the map that's up here right now, except instead of Dalton, it's Lee. This is, you're looking at the proximity map? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's exactly what Arturo just said. Is there a second? I second, because I'd like to have discussion. Okay, so we'll open discussion. Running the numbers, um, so I I feel strongly about keeping Lee as a school, um, with in a high density population to serve a community of of families who walk, um, and I know how meaningful that is to be able to walk to school, and especially when that's your only transportation option or your only reliable transportation option. Um, 
I also hear us conflating a little bit about the cost of modernization at elementary schools of what we've already done with Dalton and what we would still need to do with Lee Elementary. Um, I, I think that with all excellent specialized programs, investment in the early stages is the is extremely important. And given the remaining 40 million, approximately $40 million in our Measure K bond, um, personally, when I hear three to $5 million to complete upgrades at Dalton or to invest that same amount of money in Lee, um, I support that. I think ensuring that our, not only our preschool, but our elementary school students having the best facilities right from the beginning um, sets the tone for their education. Um, and so I'm, I'm in favor of, of keeping Lee open and um, I would like to have a further discussion about uh, keeping both Lee and so the motions, the motion as it stands, but adding back Dalton. And just for clarification, if I can ask board members part of their motions, I understand the way that board member Cruz Gonzalez framed them. We ran through a series of schools that would remain open. And then the, the flip side of that coin is that there are specific schools that would be closed. I just want to make sure that that's clear in the motion itself. So just, yeah, so then I'll clarify. So then that means the schools would be closing would be Ellington, Powell, and Dalton. So, I, Sabrina, I hear what you're saying, but what would be the impact on, on student enrollment if we ended? I mean, we would end up just closing two of the smallest schools is what we'd be doing. So I'm asking you, Arturo, what's the impact if we if we just close two of the smallest schools? And then we'll be doing this another couple of years all, all over again. That is definitely one possible impact is that the board uh, would find itself uh, in a situation in the near future, possibly of having this this conversation uh, once again uh, in terms of um, schools and, and the capacity at schools. Uh, leaving uh, Dalton open as well uh, would probably significantly also uh, decrease uh, our uh, capacity uh, number. Um, so, I mean, those are those are some of them, obviously, as we start to to consider or, or think about, again, when we have small schools, the challenges with combination classrooms, uh, program, right, those kinds of things, uh, those become, you know, additional pressure points as, as well. Um, so those are some possible outcomes by leaving, uh, by leaving uh, Dalton open or another way of saying it by only closing Powell and Ellington. And I just want to clarify, so my motion specifically did not include Longfellow because I feel like that needs to be a separate conversation. Board Member Rodriguez Mania. Um, I, I do know uh, we wanted to reach 85% capacity. What would be the capacity if we did leave um, Lee and Dalton open? W where would we stand then? Well, Natasha can do that real quick. Give me one second to put them all in. Sorry, as she's doing that, I, there is another that just came to my my head. Another possible uh, impact um, is that we'd be stretching our bond dollars then also um, by by adding another school that we're that's still not complete. Uh, that that would that would add another layer of the. Concerns. I'm going to go ahead. While she's um, running up those numbers, I'm I'm going to speak on. Um, I I I hear what my colleagues are saying, um, and how you know Lee, you know um, people are walking to Lee, and like I said before, if if we close Dalton and we keep Lee open again, we're only going to have 
Hodge be up in the northern area. And we have people living on 9th Street on Crescent Drive that don't go to Hodge, that go to Dalton. I, I mean, e either way, it, it's, you know, it's going to be one way or another. It, it's going to hurt families. So I, I oppose closing Dalton. And I, I, I don't agree with that. I think we do, we do need two schools in the northern area to be able to give services and accommodate those families in, the, in that area. You know, people think that just because families live above, what is it, Alasta Avenue, Route 66, that these families are not struggling as well. Well, I know a lot of families up there that are struggling, that are living in, um, you know, in a one bedroom, that are living in garages. And so I, I do not agree with the motion. And I feel that we need to keep Dalton open to be able to give those families at least that other school in the northern area above Route 66. Since we have all the, all the other four schools south, I, I don't think that that's, that that's okay for our families. I have to agree on that. If, if we're going to talk about um, oh, we're going to base it on people walking. Every school you go to, people are walking. It doesn't matter what part of the city you're on. If, I mean, if you're basing it on that, it, it, there's apartments in, throughout the city of Azusa, and parents are walking everywhere. Right, and that's my point, Board like Member Yolanda. I, I, you know, um, that, that's exactly my point, that wherever, whatever elementary that we have, we have families walking to these elementaries and so therefore I, I do not agree I think we need to keep both um, you know Dalton and Hodge and the northern area for those families um, and keep the bottom ones as they are on the map as we are seeing it right now. So I just want to clarify I mean I think I talked about walking but that's not that was not the rationale of why I said we should, I would I prefer if we kept Lee school I, I said it because I, I'm thinking about um, population density. I'm thinking about school age population density and where that school age popu population lives in this in our in our school district boundaries. Um, and I think looking at previous data, right? Um, there's much more density um, between below Foothill and the and the freeway um, than we have. I mean, even though maybe a larger geographic area, there's less population density above Foothill, Foothill Avenue. So that, that's my rationale. So I don't want us to get caught up in the walking piece because yes, I appreciate oh, you brought that up. students. Yeah, I know, but I just want to be clarified that that's not the rationale for why I am suggesting that we do Lee instead of Dalton. I have the capacity. So um, including Hodge, Lee, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, and Magnolia, our capacity will be a 76.15. And if we add Dalton to that list, our capacity goes to 68.33. Thank you. And is that including, is that taking Longfellow out of the picture in both scenarios? I did not include Longfellow. These are just keeping those schools open. I will, I will add that just looking at, just looking geographically where, where school sites make sense, I, I personally am not opposed to the concept of, of a Dalton and a Lee both being there. I think that they, it would warrant a conversation around, around resources and, and what we would do with, 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 with dollars and how those dollars would stretch across. Um, those those sites with the modernization that is left to be done. Um, so while I'm not opposed to seeing Dalton remain, I don't see, I don't, be, due to primarily population density, I don't see how we exclude Lee from, from uh, an, an option. And I 
actually agree. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I would actually agree with board member Bowen and, and keep them both open and, um, you know, stay at 68, 33 and take that chance because we're looking, we're looking, if we're looking to, to look, let's be real. Rosedale is right there. We want to go ahead and invite those the students to come into our district. Some of the students that live in Rosedale at this moment do not come to our district. Dalton's right there. What is the capacity right now? Hodge is at capacity. They're at what, 700 students? Six, 690? 598. 598. And their capacity is 753. I still believe we need to keep Dalton open because again, then we're gonna have one elementary above Route 66. And, you know, taking in consideration, too, that we found an earthquake uh, fault line, and that was a big thing before as well. Um, I just don't feel comfortable keeping Lee open at this time. That, that did not, they did the, um, right, and there's, there's no earthquake fault line there. Well, there's no active earthquake fault line, but we did trench at both Dalton and yeah. at Lee. Yeah. So, so as, as we look to modern, oh, Arthur, do you want to explain what happened at Dalton and Lee? I'm going to try my best. But um, as we, you know, kind of the conversations we were having previously, you start a project and then they want to check, you know, everything else. Uh, one of the things that came up uh, was that uh, there was a fault line uh, that was uh, running um, through part of the city uh, that affected Lee uh, and Dalton. And so one of the things we had to do uh, was uh, several uh, seismic studies uh, that included um, pretty extensive uh, trenching and digging, uh, gosh, deep uh, to to try and investigate if this uh, fault was active or the potential being active. And so we had to do that at both uh, Dalton and Lee as part of the condition to continue forward uh, with upgrades and modernizations, uh, but those were uh, done and concluded at both of those schools. Okay, so we, there, is a, there is a motion and a second on the floor. There, there, there has been additional conversation. I, I don't know if anybody is, is after, after conversation is wanting to revise their their position as a motion or a second if if not or or add add some additional commentary if not um i'll call them board president can you clarify what you mean by revise your motion or revise your second yes so so there was the, what's on the on the table the, the motion on the table now is for victor hodge paramount valleydale murray magnolia and lee to remain open the motion that is currently on the floor does not include dalton there has been conversation around Lee or Dalton, Lee and Dalton, um, and so that that seems to be where the where where uh, there's been conversation, but but no revision of motion or second. So if there is not a change to or a revision to the motion or to the second, um, or if there's no additional com uh, discussion, then I'll call the vote. And and apart from there being a revision by Board Member Cruz Gonzalez who made the initial motion, there could be a motion to amend. By other board members that changes that motion motion to amend so i can go ahead and um close uh, how, how would i go ahead and word it that depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish in the motion so, i would like to remove lee um from the schools being open and put and include dalton so then the motion to amend um by board member Arianna swap uh lee for dalton and then if there's a second on that motion and then the majority of the board approves that motion, 
that motion that would supplant the original motion by board member. I second the motion. Uh, then we'll open that up for the discussion. Um, again, I'll, I'll I'll say I I don't I I I do not see a a, a viable option where Lee is not included. Just looking at that um, at at the population density and looking at that that area um, and and the distance. Where where those where that that higher population of uh, density where those students um, would would go, so I would I personally would be opposed to uh, any any solution. I, I I don't see a viable solution that doesn't keep Leo. I agree with Board President Greer. Can we call the vote? Any other discussion? Okay, so we'll do a, a hand vote. Um, and, and to clarify, this clarify vote, vote is to approve the motion to amend. If it's approved, it plants back to discussion, and there would need to be a final vote. Yes, and the motion and second that's on the floor. Okay, so can, you, can you repeat that, Carlos? The motion on the floor is to amend the original motion by board member Cruz Gonzalez, and it needs a majority to pass. If that, if that motion to amend passes, it then becomes the main motion, which is open for further discussion, and then ultimately board vote. And so that motion, that that substitute motion that is currently on the floor, that motion has, to amend, not substitute motion. The motion to amend. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. That is currently on the floor is uh, for Victor Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Magnolia, and Dalton to remain open. That's what we're currently voting on. Um, board member Rodriguez Pena. Why am I always first? <laughs> Yes. Uh, board member Bo? No. Uh, board member Cruz Gonzalez? No. Board member Arianes? Yes. And I am a no. So that so I believe we revert back to the original motion, which is Victor Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Magnolia, and Lee. Um is there any other discussion? before we call a vote? Yes. Um, I know that this is an extremely difficult decision in considering where students are going to school currently, where they've been to school, where their brothers and sisters have gone to school. The unique school culture at each site is something that is irreplaceable. And I think all of us in this room feel that. And I want to share that what I'm feeling is trying to navigate all of this information in a way that is um, responsive to our collective social emotional health, as well as being res fiscally responsible um, to steward this district and set it up for continued success for generations to come. And that was my preamble to say that um, I am not in support of the motion currently on the floor, and um, I have a, a different proposal in mind. Carlos, are we then? Would would she be able to make a secondary motion to amend? That's correct. Board member Bo can then make a motion to amend if that's her intention. I think it's easier for me as an individual to talk about in making a motion the schools that will stay open and the schools that will close. You have the floor, board member Bo. I just wanted to make sure that the record is clear that when we talk about keeping schools open, there is schools that are closed. Sure. So um, I make the motion to, um, I'd like to amend the motion to state that the elementary schools that will close will be Ellington, Magnolia, and Powell. Is there a second? I second that motion. Okay, then we'll open it up for discussion.
So, excuse me, so the motion is to close Ellington, Magnolia, and Paul. Is that, is that what you That's motion? the motion that's on, that's the, on the floor, on the floor? Yes. And so the, the flip side of that is the schools that would remain would be Dalton, Hodge, Murray, Paramount, Paramount Valleydale, and Lee. What What is the current... What is our current capacity percentage at Murray? Percentage? Yeah, so so I'm trying to understand what is the size of the school and how many students are currently there? Because right. if there are students at if if this motion were to move forward, then there are students at Magnolia then who would potentially go to Murray and I'm wondering what kind of space is available at Murray to receive those students. So the capacity at Murray is 867. And there are currently 490 students there at Murray. That is correct. Can you repeat that number again, please? Yes. The capacity at Murray is 867. There are currently 490 students. Would these students be also able to go to Lee? I mean, it, it, you said it was 1.6 miles, Mr. Mankeo. The answer to your first question is is yes. Uh, we have taken a very open approach uh, to uh, school choice in our district and really allowing families to, uh, for whatever reasons they may have, to be able to go to whatever school uh, they want to and not being uh, tied down by, uh, by boundaries. And the difference, uh, the distance difference between Magnolia and Charles Lee is 1.6 miles. And just for the record, Magnolia and Murray, if you're able to. Thank you, Mr. Ronquillo. One point two uh, miles is the difference between Magnolia Elementary and Murray Elementary. Or President, um, I'd just like to add my my um, support of obviously this is my motion. Um, I really want us to ensure that we have a strong and common sense transportation plan for the district and especially for our elementary school students and families. I know we've talked about it in terms of potential route drivers. And I think as we get closer to identifying campuses, I agree with uh, board member Rodriguez Pena about using school sites rather than neighborhood pickup and drop off sites. Um, I think for safety and visibility and just um, community comfort, to me, that makes sense. Mr. Mall, are you able to speak to what our element with this motion that's on the floor, what our elementary school capacity would be? 78.79. Say that again, I'm Okay, any other comment or discussion? Hearing none. Well, maybe it doesn't matter, but then that means there'll be no elementary schools in that brand new board district. Maybe that doesn't matter. The conversation was that regardless of where a board member lives or the district that they're in, um, we service all of the elementary, so. That's true, but I, I mean, I just remind us that those were cut by population density. So just kind of... Okay. Then hearing no further comments, I'll call the vote. Uh, board, Can yes. you please repeat? I'll repeat. Uh, so the, the motion that's currently, this 
uh, an amended motion that's currently on the table, if I'm not mistaken, is for Victor Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Lee, and Dalton to remain open. Board Member Rodriguez Pena. Yes, Board Member Bo, did you have a question? On my apologies. Sorry, Board President. Are we voting on the amendment? This is a vote on the amend on the amendment, which mm -hmm. was your amended motion. For it to become the main motion. Correct. It would. It, this is for it to become the main motion. It would require a second vote. Yes. After that, okay. And so this is, then, then it would be open for discussion again, and then there could be a final okay. vote. So this is just a vote for it to thank you for it to become the main motion. Board member Bo. Yes. Board member Arianes. Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez. No. Board member Rodriguez Pena. No. And I would say yes. So that brings that brings this as the as the main motion, which is now open for open for discussion. Any additional discussion? Okay. Then I will call the vote. Board member Arianes? Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? No. Board member Rodriguez Pena? No. Board member Bo? Yes. And I would say yes. So that, so the motion passed is three to two. Um, now the second secondary part of this is looking at timeline. So again, there is a one year implementation that, 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 we, that we could take. There are, is also the two year implementation that has been proposed to us from, from staff. And so is there any discussion or uh, a motion on the floor? I motion that we take the one year be specific you're 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 motioning that uh, everything take place this next year uh fall of 22 yes that was was what was recommended by cabinet and therefore i am agreeing with that Is, uh, you're shaking your head now arturo can, can you please speak on that uh yes our recommendation and i'm putting it up in the spreadsheet uh, seems to uh better so our recommendation is that in year one uh, the open elementaries would remain as is nothing would happen with the elementary schools that are to remain open the elementary schools that are going to be closed um, would not receive any new uh, pk k pk or k students uh, the following year, the open schools uh, would become preschool through fifth grade uh, schools because the sixth graders would go to Glassone, uh, the Glassone High School campus uh, up here. And then on this year, uh, the campuses would close. Just for clarification, are, are you saying that it would take then two years? Um, Depend, it, it's a logistical question. I mean, depending on how you look at it, we think it's a year and a half only. Uh, in a year and a half, the schools would be closed. Then to be able to go ahead and make the full transition, right? To make bring the sixth graders to um, the mega middle school to have that transition to be able to, okay, to make all the pieces of the puzzle move. Correct. So I motion that we close the elementaries in two years and that our students start, you know what, can you put, I'm a visual, like, what year would the schools close and what year would at the open schools that we have voted on 
when would those students start? When would they all be transitioned into their new schools? So next school year, 22-23, uh, new TK and K students would start at their new school. In 23-24, all students would be transitioned to new schools. Let me go ahead and start over. Uh, President, may I? Please. I motion that 2022-2023 TK start at their new schools. 2023-2024, that all students start at their new respective school. Second that a motion. Um, just for clarity, you would include preschool with that, not just TK. I'm sorry, are we are we speak are we speaking about preschool? The reason um, we would definitely preschool is a different is different than TKK and so forth uh, because um, there are um, certain uh, processes that have to take place with the state uh, in order to to move. And so we would we would start that immediately, uh, but I cannot guarantee that you know those things would happen, and that's why we for sure would say TKK, and and if we happen to to be able to get all of the um, OKs uh, from the state, uh, then we can start we can start transitioning preschool uh, as well. So going back to my motion to include preschool. Pending, including preschool pending the authorization from the yeah. state. Carlos. And, and I just want to point out again, just for the record, when we're restating the record, and it's something that the board president can do also before it falls to a question, we can restate the school because this vote is really based on the previous vote that, right. that the board took. That's I just want to connect the two. And I will go ahead and motion one more time. I motion that year 2022-2023 preschool, if it, if it is approved, and TK start at their new respective school. We would recommend and K as well. Okay. Preschool, TK, and K, which are Hodge, Valleydale, Aramont. Murray, Lee, and Dalton. And the year 2024, I'm sorry, 2023 and 2024, that all students start at their new respected schools, which are Hodge, Valleydale, Paramount, Murray, Lee, and Dalton. With the second, we got a second on the floor before. I, I know I haven't heard a second yet. I, I had a second, yes. Do you still second that? Yes. You second the new motion? Yes. Revised motion? Okay. Then any additional discussion? Remember both? Thank you. Mr. Ortega, can you talk a little bit in more detail about the rationale behind this proposed timeline? And is it really grounded in the transition for the preschool sites to have the appropriate licensing at new sites? Or are there other considerations in this proposal? Yes, definitely not. <clears throat> definitely not because of the the, the preschool. Uh, that just again, that's just a uh, a nice to have. Um, it just in case again, there's any kind of hiccup on uh, on the state in in moving uh, preschool programs. Uh, but much like um, the high schools uh, and middle schools. <clears throat> And the magnitude of you know closing uh, this amount of schools um, from preschool all the way to twelfth grade, uh, this one year uh, serves as a data point. Sorry about that. Uh, serves as a data point and a planning point uh, to ensure that in twenty three twenty four, when this massive move happens, um, that we are doing it uh, as effect effectively and as efficiently as possible. What variables do you anticipate arising from closure of elementary school? Can you repeat that question? What variables do you anticipate 
um, arising from the closure of re elementary school? Um, so um, again, I think this is a great thing about our district. Uh, we uh, do not hold um, families um, to their boundaries. And so knowing the kindergarten class uh, that shows up and the TK class that shows up at um, the, the new schools uh, would help us in, in better uh, planning uh, for staffing uh, in the coming years. Is there, is, there, is there any additional impact in terms of the sixth graders having to stay on the, on the, at the elementary site in terms of enrollment at the site? If you're adding additional TK preschool kinder and then you have sixth grade that year, does, does that have impact as well? Um, no, and you actually brought up a, a, another point. Um, if we were to close all the schools in 22-23, um, we would have to decide um, are we going to move the sixth graders to the existing uh, campuses, which which we can? Um, existing middle school campus. That's what that, my question known to the so, oh, to so the that, new. That's, that's an option, right? So oh, I see. Okay. So, in, so in 22, 23, do, do Center, Foothill, and Slauson all of a sudden become sixth grade through eighth grade again? But again, that's a lot of of, of shuffling of students and staff for one year. Uh, they cannot go to the six eight. Uh, Gladstone campus because obviously there's 10th and 12th graders there. So do we shift them all to the the schools that are going to remain open for one year, and then the following year we're going to lose all of that? So again, it seems like a, a that's another point that um, that aligns with the secondary move uh, with our six considering our sixth graders that we wouldn't have to worry about if we went with this. Um, this two year or year and a half plan. Okay. Can I say it a different way? Because I know that you're pondering. You good? Okay. Just for clarification, basically the way that um, we have voted, the way that it, um, our, our recent vote, um, basically this two year plan aligns with that is what you're saying. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So if there's no further comment, I, I will restate the best of my ability, the motion that is on the floor. Um, we are looking at for the year starting in fall 22-23 that Victor Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Lee, and Dalton would remain open. Would you put that slide back? Would would remain open um, for for preschool. Can you put the Excel back up? Thank you. Um, let me let me restate. So Victor, Victor Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Lee, and Dalton would remain open for for or preschool through sixth grade for the 22-23 school year, pending state approval, and that the elementaries that are slated to be consolidated into the other ones would only remain open for first through sixth grade, and that in the 22-24 school year, 23. excuse me, thank you, 23-24 school year, uh, that there would be preschool through fifth grade for the designated elementaries that will remain open and the designated closed elementaries uh, will, will then be closed. So that is the vote uh, that, that I'm calling now. Board President, can I ask for a point of clarification? Sure. So for the elementary schools that are slated to be closed, um, what is happening with students in grades seven and eight? We've, we've made that decision in a prior vote where Center Middle School, Foothill Middle School, and Slauson Middle School would remain open for seventh through eighth grade for the first year. And don't, we have a T, don't we have a TK-8 school currently? Ellington? Yes. So in this proposal, Ellington would continue, would serve next year, next year would serve grades one through eight. Is that what we mean to say? Yes. 
that would make the most that would make the most sense. So I would throw it to board member Ariana to see if, if she was willing to revise her motion. I'm going to look at Carlos. And you know, I, by the way, I'm so glad you're here. And for the people watching, um, we, we've never done this. And therefore, we have our lawyer here um, helping us out so we get it right. So I will go ahead and add that Ellington be open until... Be open in 22-23, first through eighth grade. First through eighth And from my, the way I heard this was Board President Greer restated the original motion. Board Member Bo, Bo pointed out that that didn't necessarily address Ellington. That has now been lumped in. So technically, that's the, the slight revision. Can I just clarify? Um, it would be first through eighth grade, regard, including in the motion, because we're just not bringing in preschool, PK, and K. So first grade would remain open. So with the original motion, it would it would would it not suffice? It doesn't address seventh and eighth grade at seventh. So you revise the motion. You revise the motion. Correct. So does that mean your revised motion stands? Yes, my revised motion. Yeah. And does the second stand? Yes. Is there a need for me to repeat the revised revised motion? Did you have a question? No, I'm, I'm waiting for you. I would, I would like to hear it. Okay, restate it. All right. So the motion that's on the table now is that beginning in 22-23, Victor Hodge, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Lee, and Dalton would be open to preschool through sixth grade pending state approval for preschool, that all other schools slated for closure would be first through sixth grade, with the exception of Ellington, which would be first through eighth grade, and that beginning in 23-24, all schools slated that I mentioned before slated to remain open will be preschool through fifth grade, and those slated for closure would, would be closed. And with that, I'll call the vote. Board member Arianes. Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez. Yes. Board member Bo. Yes. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes. And I'm also yes. Okay. So looking then at what, what we have left, the, the, there are a couple items that are, that are, it's 1008. There are a couple items that are three and four, um, which, I don't have it in front of me, but it was Longfellow and programs are uh, branding. Well, Longfellow and programs are recommended for a future conversation after after the break. Branding is one of the is, is recommended that we address now, um, but but we did already address the things that are most pressing. So if we have the capacity at 1008 to address uh, branding, we can do that now if that is the the wish of the the board. Board uh, President, if I just may. Um, if that is if that is the will of the board, uh, just a reminder that uh, you will have to call for a vote uh, to extend the board meeting uh, past 1030. Correct. I am going to suggest that we move that to the discussion or since we've already tackled the bigger ones that we go ahead and move it. I, I, I am I cannot stay after 1030. Right. So it's 1009. So do we. So I cannot. Correct. So it's 10.09. So we, we still have, there's still uh, time, 21 minutes that we have to discuss branding. Um, or so we can look to do that unless the, again, the will of the board is to, to if, if you would prefer to not discuss this and push this to after the, the break. I'd rather discuss now. I'd like to have the discussion now. Okay. So then as it pertains to the branding, there's, there's been a little, a little bit of some, some back and forth. We originally talked about it and said, and, and didn't vote, but gave direction on not branding. Um, and then there, there had been some conversation around 
around maybe maybe doing some, some rebranding. And so that's in front of us now. Um, does anyone have any comments, any su suggestions, or would anyone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to. I, well, I'd like to suggest that we step. We do even more separation, and we separate the name of the school and the mascot, and vote on those separately. Okay. And so I'd like to make a motion that we would keep the consolidated school as Azusa High School. And that's going to take 15 minutes for us to. Well, I'm making a motion. Well, we'll see what happens. That maybe when maybe we don't get to it in 15 minutes, but we can at least try. Can you repeat that again, please? I make the motion. I'm not talking about the, the mascot, but the motion on the floor would be that we would. The comprehensive high school that would be cited at the Azusa High location right now would remain Azusa High School. Thank you. Got it. A second. 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 second by Board Member Bo. Um, and then discussion. Um, board Member Cruz Gonzalez, I would ask, does that then by default mean keeping the name Gladstone in middle school? Or are you also separating that? Oh, no. I, I would. Yes. I would keep Gladstone High School. I mean, Gladstone as Gladstone Middle School. Would you still second, second that? Or Board Member Bo, would you yes, still? Yes, I second that. Okay, so that's the, uh, is there any additional discussion? That's what's on the floor now is keeping the name, um, not, not concerning mascot, keeping the name Azusa High School or the centralized comprehensive high school and keeping the name Gladstone in the new, uh, soon to be new middle school. Then I will call the vote. Board Member Adianis. Um, I would like to just go ahead and um, express some things before and uh, during discussion. And for right now, as we're going this, you know, through this transition, in in a perfect world, right. Um, it, it would be great, absolutely great to, to go ahead and just rebrand every elementary and rebrand everything. Our high school, our middle school, the name. I get it. The change is here. The change is now. But, uh, you know, after much consideration, I, I, I do want to say that the one thing that I do see and that is that I, I agree that for as much as I want rebranding or the name, I do have to say that I, I would like to go ahead and keep the Sousa High School and Blackstone High School. The board member Adriana, that, that was a yes? Yes, sir. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board member Bo? Yes. Board member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. And I am also a yes. Seeing as how we have separated out the names, uh, that still calls, kind of the, begs the question around, around branding. Um, is this something at 1013, uh, excuse me, mascot, is this something at 10, if this is something at 1013 that we would like to continue, then I would ask if there's any discussion or motion uh, on the, the, the mascot. I, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that um, Azusa High will be um, the new colors, the new mascot. I just feel that that would, we were talking about, you know, what we heard today was fairness from both sides. And I think that Keeping the Zusa name, and I know that was very important also, but I think uh, changing the mascot and, and the colors um, and letting the um, community, you know, pitch in on that, I think it, it would be um, wise for us to do that. I second that motion. So moved by Board Member Rodriguez Pena, seconded by Board Member Arianes, that we would change the colors and mascot of Azusa High School. Um, discussion. Um, would that mean then that Glad, what is Gladstone Middle School, that that would remain, uh, that there'd be no change to, to, to the mascot or colors? I, I think it should remain only, I mean, we're talking about money and in, in financially, you know, we would um, save money by keeping it that way and uh, making uh, Azusa High 
Because there's a high, right? And it's change your mascot in the colors. Yes. Um, does that mean you're willing to revise? Are you willing to revise your motion to include Gladstone yes. Middle School remaining the same colors and the same mascot? Yes, I'd make a motion to um, change the mascot and color at Azusa High School on Azusa campus and keep the name Gladstone Middle School at Gladstone Middle School campus. And is your second a middle school? A second. Okay. Any additional discussion? Yeah, I have a question, a clarifying question. So <clears throat> in this in this proposal, we've decided to keep the name Azusa High School and transition to Gladstone Middle School. By changing colors and or the mascot, the funds used for rebranding would still be needed. Is that correct, Ms. Ortega? The same no. level of funding would be needed because we're changing the mascot and the colors on the field, on uniforms. I would say uh, that is accurate. If there, there there might be a tad bit of savings on on some things, uh, but uh, not not much. And the only thing I'm thinking of, like if anything has AHS, that again, if there's like a a mural or something that says AHS, that that and we don't need to worry about that. Then again, that's why I said tad bit. Uh, some uniforms might have AHS, but if we're if we're changing the color, then that would need to change as well. One of the things that we heard. Um, earlier was that our students, the uniforms are falling apart. So I think this is a great opportunity to, you know, to bring new uniforms to to, to our sport. They, they, they've had these for, for several years and um, this is a great opportunity to, you know, bring that and at least give, we're, we're, we're asking the ninth graders, right? We already voted on this. To go to a respected new school, right? Azusa High School and take in that name. The least that we can give them now is a little bit of sense of pride in, in unity and equity. And that is by, re, you know, changing the mascot as some people I, I took in suggestion that came today and, and spoke on this. If we were willing, you know, I, I think it's great. We'll keep Azusa High School. Let's go ahead and change the mascot. Let's go ahead and just do a tiny bit to be able to unify these students together. Keep the Asusa name. Are we able to speak to the as we consider the, the you know jerseys and sports equipment that that is is kind of on the, in the pipeline to be up, updated? Where, where is that in its life cycle anyway? Is, is this something that needs to be addressed in the, in the upcoming year, two, three, anyhow? So the question is, you're asking um, the uniforms at Azusa High School in terms of what, what's new and what's not new? Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, we, we could get more information on that. But my understanding is it's in various cycles. So some teams will have had new uniforms and others have not. So uh, the band, for example, um, they got, I think they got new uniforms, I want to say maybe four years ago. Um, and that was actually a two-year process. So I think that's about, about. And when you say four years, for example, with Ben, when you say four years ago, about how long are those expected to, to, to be used? That's a good question. I, I'm just, I wouldn't be able to answer that one. I don't know. Not... Okay, any other yeah, so I just want to make some comments. Um, so I, I, I would be opposed to this, and and I and I want to be, you know, I I I understand and respect the request to want to create a, a new, you know, a new thing for the, for the students that are coming in from Gladstone, but I really oppose it for a couple facts. Um, first, I oppose it because. Um, I don't think it's fiscally responsible. I think when we when we were having conversations about the school sites and modernization, the funds that we use to modernize schools primarily come from modernization bonds, right? Which are separate levies that we have or ask our community to pass to be able to pay for that. If we do a rebranding process, some of it, if it's related to facilities can come from that kind of funding. Although I'm not sure if the criteria that we set out for measure, the last measure we passed, Measure K, whether or not that would fit. So that would, I'm so I'm not sure about that. But for sure, many of the things that would have to happen would be coming out of 
funds that are being generated by our student population. So those are students that are in our schools this year. And we would be, instead of spending it on programs for them or opportunities or instruction, we would be spending that on rebranding. And so the, the, the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we okay spending dollars that are meant for students' education to change some color? And, and for me, I have to say that I just am not comfortable with that. So I think, I mean, I think that's, the, that's, that's, that's the first thing. And I, I mean, I guess I'll just leave it there. That, that's, my, that's my primary concern. I would like to remind um, cabinet and the board that we, we received some money from the city from them selling some bonds. And that was for facilities use. And don't quote me on the amount, but this was about $8, $8 million. And that was from the Rosedale. The, the, the contract, to refresh everyone's memory, the contract that this district never received, the school that was promised. We sued the developer, not we, but the board did, or, or the, the, the district did, sued the city. The case was thrown out because of the fact that there was contingency of 300 students from Rosedale residents that needed to bring 300 students to our school district, which never has happened and has not happened. We lost both times and lost $8.5 million, fighting a fight that we were never going to win. Now, the city, we negotiated. And they were kind enough to give us an olive branch and say, here, you know what? We serve the same constituents, which is you guys. Here's some money. So I believe that we do have, we can take some of that money and some of the, I remember last week when we asked Latasha, correct me if I'm wrong, maintenance, right? Did you say? We have deferred maintenance. Deferred maintenance, right? So we do have some money to at least change the mascot. Therefore, I stand with, re, you know, with just changing the mascot. We had even uh, um, a teacher today, Mr. Uh, Sanchez. Sanchez, Mr. Neal, both from two separate schools, Gladstone, one from Azusa them coming together and agreeing on this, that speaks volume. Our kids deserve this. To spend a little to unify our students at our new respected school that we have agreed on today. We've made a lot of sacrifices today. A lot of sacrifices. We have the money. I know we do. And if not, we'll find the money that I know we can do because there's also grants out there for facilities. And if it's going to cost, you're saying a little bit less, or Mr. Arturo, you said it's a little bit less. Possibly. Than, right? So our students are worth it. Mr. Mall, um, can, can you speak to the, the, the funds that we're, that we're looking at, the, the 30, 39 million that, that we have? Um, which I assume includes any any dollars that would have come from from um, any any settlement that that we had is it's it's not inclusive of that. It's not okay. So can you can you speak to in speaking to either of those two kind of um, pots? Can, can you speak to the the appropriateness of utilizing those funds for this purpose, or would that indeed, as Board Member Cruz Gonzalez is, is mentioning, would that need to come from a different fund? Um, so we cannot use bond funds for this um, because the bond project was written with bond language and identified the type of projects we're gonna do and um, rebranding was not one of the projects. Um, we cannot use deferred maintenance to buy uniforms. Deferred maintenance is to upgrade your facility. Um, so if we were repainting the whole school, then you probably could tie in putting a new logo up, but you can't just say it's for the purpose of um, rebranding. The Rosedale funds, we would have to um, consult with legal to see if rebranding will qualify. Um, Again, that was part of developer fees that was not received, and developer fees are supposed to be used on based on growth. So I would have to say a board member Cruz Gonzalez is correct. 
that we will be using general fund dollars for rebranding purposes um, because most of the other funds are tied to facility upgrade to me. Mr. Tasha Jamal, can I ask a clarifying question? Um, first and foremost, I, uh, I think the majority of, of, of uh, rebranding uh, does not fall on Measure K uh, or Deferred Maintenance or Rosedale. Uh, but just for, for super transparency, would re would uh, uh, changing the overlay uh, on the football field would that be considered uh, or uh, part of the part of a bond? No, no, because they've already used bond dollars to pay for the initial upgrade. Okay. And my question to my board is: Are our students worth it? As we're going through this reconfiguration. Our students are worth it. We're, we're talking about, you know what? I, I heard both sides. At least we're coming in the middle. We're not, you know, we, we did not change Azusa High School's name. I strongly believe that we should keep it Azusa High. It's in Azusa and we should keep it Azusa. Let's come in the middle and let, let, you know, let's just come in the middle. At first, I wanted the full rebranding and changing the whole name. You know what? I'm willing to come to the middle. I think that we owe it to our students that are here currently. I think they've gone through enough these last two years with COVID and now this transition. You know what? Let's make it exciting for them. They're worth it. They're worth that changing of that mascot to unify them again. Board member audience, for this, just for the sake of time. Um because it's 1027. I know that you had a comment, Board Member Rodriguez Pena. I did. Um, so you're willing to spend um, 3.4 to 5.7 million on, uh, on lease school. And I know it's school bond money and I understand what you're saying, but the best way to honor tradition on our both high schools is to make that change. We're gonna keep Azusa High School the name. I think it's only right. You know, it's a difficult um, decision for all of us. But let's not choose from one school to the next school, you know, who's better, who's color. And, and I've been hearing this. I've been in board for 10 years, and I've been hearing the same thing. And I think that it would, um, now is the opportunity to, to unite the schools, to unite the students by merging them. And, you know, we'll send a message. Of we're not choosing one school after another school. Yes, I know it's going to cost it's under a million dollars. It started at 2.5 million, then we heard 1.8 million. Now I think it's under... Uh, one million. So, I mean, why why can't we honor our community? May I respond? And our students. May I respond? I mean, we had so, a young man when he spoke to them. He was almost crying because you know, and he's a young man. You know, he's a freshman, but you know, it's only right. We, we you know, we we're going to move to that camp. Fine, we're going to keep that name. Fine. Why can't we meet in the middle and 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 make it happen? So I just want to re respond to the your first question about why am I okay spending money on modernization versus this? Um, and I I'll just repeat what I said at the outset. Um, we 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 went to our community. We asked them to pass Measure K, and within that measure, we said we are going to make a commitment to modernize all our unmodernized schools, which include both Dalton and Lee. Right. So we already have that funding um, that's been um, allocated to do that work, and it's coming on modernization rebranding will be coming out of our general fund. So when we think about LCFF, when we think about our, our, our base grant and supplemental concentration, and I'm gonna suggest we don't spend supplemental concentration dollars on this. You're talking about this is coming out of our base grant. It's supposed to fund all of our teachers, all of our textbook adoptions, all of our, our base programs that we offer, that we're required to offer by under Ed code. So th that is why I make, I, I make a distinction between rebranding and the modernization. Can I, can now, I, can I, can I uh, let me just finish. And so and it's clear that we're not going to be able to solve this. is not going to happen tonight because we're going to end in a minute. So I do want to. I, I say we, we vote tonight. We're, we're already here. So I mean, I, I did want. Well, if we're not, if we're going to continue this conversation, I did want to ask Arturo um, if it's even possible to think about, because uh, I'm just thinking about both that sophomore and junior class, right? Is there some way that we can co-locate the two high schools in name? And so those students, those students can graduate as Gladstone Gladiators and then retire that. And maybe it's not feasible because they'll all be on one site, 
but I'm just wanting to know if, if you can investigate that, if we're, if we continue this conversation and that way we protect those two grades that we're most concerned about. It doesn't, it doesn't address the issue about, you know, I guess this, this supposed rivalry that we have, I feel that we're one community. Um, but I think that that might be a, an option. But let me, let me just ask this question because it's 10, it's 10 30. So before we, before we <laughs> even move forward, no, hang on, before we even move forward at all and take any next steps or decide to vote, we first need to need to determine if we're going to extend our time or if we're going to end. So, so, so I'm first I'm first calling a vote to see if if there's willingness to to continue this uh, this meeting or or um, or to adjourn. Motion to continue. Board President, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, per the board bylaw, uh, number one, if there's a motion to extend, I think there has to be a time uh, specified. So, as an example, I motion to extend the meeting to 10:45, 11, whatever that is, and then if I'm not mistaken, in the board bylaw. Uh, that only happens once. And then, so whatever that time is, once we hit that time, then per board bylaw, then the meeting is over at that time. So is there, is there a motion on the floor to extend our meeting? Motion to extend our meeting, 1055. Is there a second? Second. Um, board member Rodriguez-Pena? Second. Um, thank you. Is there any discussion? Then we'll go ahead and vote. Board member Rodriguez-Pena? Yes. Board member Bo? Yes. Uh, board member Arianes? Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. And I would actually be no, but uh, the motion passes four to, four to one. I was going to be no. I changed oh. my vote to no. I'm voting with you. Okay. Um, so the, so we'll, we'll continue till 10.55. Just a reminder, oh. and just a reminder, you have a current motion still on the floor. Call to order. I would call the vote. And the, the vote on the floor is to rebrand. To change the mascot. And the colors. Okay. Um, so let, let me just say, I would be, I would be on, if, if we're, if we were going to move forward with this under the, if we were going to move forward with rebranding without clear understanding of where dollars are coming from, like just simply saying, we'll find the, we'll find those dollars me is, 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 would be fiscally irresponsible. So if, if we were, so, so that, that's part of why I, I would have voted to just, um, and part of the reason why I would have voted to end the meeting to, to collect information, because without knowing, without, without clear understanding of where dollars would come from in order to, to, to spend the, the, the money for, for rebranding, I, 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 I see it as, as irresponsible for us to, uh, to, to take this vote as and I agree with you, um, or President Greer. Also, I mean, is, is there any grants that we can look into or there's other funding that we can, you know, that you can maybe bring, bring to us? I mean, is that possible? Um, we don't know if it's possible, but we did reach out to our grant uh, company uh, and ask a specific question uh, to please uh, search uh, far, deep, and wide uh, to see if there were any grant opportunities uh, for rebranding, uh, they have come back with uh, a, a possibility. It seems like a, like a little stretch. It seems like a stretch, uh, but said we might try. Um, again, I did look. I, I did take an opportunity to look at that uh, particular grant, and uh, I would say that it, it does seem uh, like a stretch, but it seems like the grant writers would be willing to try. What, what is that grant? Uh, was it Ford, Fordham? No. Board member Rodriguez Pena just had a question. Are you withdrawing your second for the current motion that's on the floor? Um no, why? I, I'm not understanding. I, I, I think you just asked the question, correct? No. Correct. I just want to clarify only because you said Oh, you that was a question. I'm sorry. Yes, it was it was just a, a part of the question. I think um, it sounded like you a moment ago. It sounded like you said you were agreeing with something that I that I said about gathering and gathering information. Yes, but you also seconded the motion to to for the for the rebranding. So does your motion still stand to vote on doing the rebranding now, or or are you suggesting that you would prefer to gather oh, more information? Oh, okay, yes, I, I I would like to um, revise my motion that maybe we should come back and maybe have some figures at that Just time. Clear, for, do, sorry for clarity. Right? You, you didn't make the motion. You second it. So, so you can, you have the option oh. of, of, of Amending. retracting your, your second. And, and or what I also heard board member Rodriguez <laughs> Pena saying, and I don't want to speak for you um, board member. It also sounded like a motion to postpone. 
So I just want to clarify whether or not Board Member Rodriguez Pena is withdrawing her second or moving to postpone this. Uh, yes, I, I would like to withdraw my second and postpone it until we have um, more conversation or information regarding the funding, if, if it's a possibility, before we make the final decision. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? So, I just want clarity. So, um, so what's the process of withdrawing your second? What I heard was a, a motion to postpone. If she withdrew the, her second, then there's no current motion on the floor. And then, then the board can decide whether or not it's going to bring up any additional business along these lines. I heard a motion to postpone more clearly than a motion to, to pull back the second. So in that case, if a majority of the board agrees, then the motion is postponed to a, and, and board member Rodriguez Pena, we should probably ask to a specific time. Um, postponed you, to, I don't know, um, <laughs> next year. Is that good? No, you, you have to specify that. <laughs> well, you have 2022. And I'll just, I'll clarify. If board member Rodriguez Pena does not identify a specific date, then it'll be at the discretion of the board president. And and working with the superintendent to set the agenda for the next time the official. I would like to leave it to the board president and the superintendent. Okay. So I just want to clarify. I I believe under Robert's series of orders, you have to postpone to a certain time. You cannot just postpone. So you have to specify the date. And I think there. I I also did some research on this before the meeting, and I saw some language that said that if you don't identify a specific meeting time, then the chairman will have um, discretion to when to set it. That's different than if it was tabled. It was completely off, off. but that's not what I'm hearing. This issue will come back. Mm -hmm. Correct. Any additional question or conversation? Well, is it debatable? I don't believe it's debatable. No, I, I think we're just, it's just a straight up motion. Are we going to postpone or not? We can't discuss okay. it. So I'll, so I'll, I'll call the vote. Uh, board member, this is a, a motion to postpone. And there was no date attached, so it would be at the at the discretion of myself and um, Ms. Dorsey. Board Member Adianis? Yes. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez? No. Board Member Bo? No. Board Member uh, Rodriguez Pena? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I just want to say we found the name. It's the Parsons Foundation. From Pas Parsons Pas Pasadena? So the motion passes three to two, um, which um, moves that item. There are there still are a couple of other items on here that that again I, I would recommend that we hold off on it. At, it's recommended by staff, and I and I I would recommend by the staff that we hold off on these things until after the break. And again, that's that is in regards to Longfellow, and it's also in regards to programs. Um, I would also make sure that we include as we're talking about programs in the future that. The decision that we made with Magnolia that we have the um, there's there's the uh, what is the name of the the uh, adult transition program that's 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 there, and so that will be included on that would need to be included on what we're what we're doing. Can, we, can so. I ask a question, Board President? Um, there was a um, there was a overcrowding when um, the adult school and uh, Sierra went to. Gladstone Street School. Can, can we get an update on that? And perhaps maybe Magnolia's uh, Elementary that we are going to go ahead and um, shut down could perhaps get the overflow of whatever is happening here. Um, I don't know, a consideration. What does that look like um, for a possible discussion? Would that be okay? We could certainly look to discuss it the next time. Yes, next is that time. A, is that a, a, just a board update? Is that an update from staff? Uh, in our minds, um, and and we're obviously made some big uh, strides here. Uh, we definitely want to begin a process uh, to identify what it is that we're going to be doing uh, with our uh, properties uh, that will be vacant. Uh, we do not want to wait. Uh, we want to start this um, right away. And so now that a decision has been rendered, uh, we will look into starting that process. Uh, and uh, engaging with the board in, in terms of next steps for that, and that would in, I, I would in, in my head that would include what board member Arianes just spoke about. Got it. Then that, then 
I will look, unless there's anything else to add, I will look to move us then to item 5.0 adjournment, specifically 5.1, which calls for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, 5.1. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Then we'll move to a, a vote. Uh, board member Adianis? Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board member Bo? Yes. Board member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. And I am also yes. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Have a good night.